I'm not going to waste your time in this video like all of the finance gurus out there on YouTube who make those clickbait videos. The top seven side hustles to make $500 a day and all of the thumbnails are like the dickheads doing this. Like $500 a day. Shut up, okay. You watch these videos on YouTube, these finance guru, these make money online videos. You keep watching them and you're still broke. You are still broke. That means that those videos don't work. By the end of this video, you will be totally and utterly equ equipped. You will have exactly the real, no bullshit, unfiltered knowledge that you need to know to get to 10K a month. What you're going to learn in this video is what other people will charge you, like $2,997,000 in a course. I'm going to give it to you for free. There's one thing that you need with this, though. You need to be hyper-focused. You see, your attention span is well and truly fucked. And so by the start of this video, you've already scrolled down, haven't you? Be honest. You've already scrolled down to the comments, haven't you? Me even being like, you know, exaggerating and, and criticizing some YouTubers, that still wasn't enough dopamine for you. You had to scroll down to the comments to get more dopamine. You had to look at your phone or some bullshit. Like you, you've been distracted from the start of this video, haven't you? So I know this is going to sound offensive, but you need to... You're probably not going to do this, but if you want this video to help you right now, and if you also want to transform your life, you need to realize that your attention is so fucked that you should probably see yourself as someone who's got learning disabilities. Like you're actually a, a little bit special. And, and not just you, obviously, the entire world is. And I know I sound like an asshole, but the fact that you can't even concentrate for like a minute. Are you going to be successful with that? Are you going to go and, and be hyper-focused and be able to do your deep work? Are you going to be able to make something so amazing that you make a good amount of money if you can't even focus for more than a few minutes? Because there's some guys out there who can focus for an hour straight and they will always fuck you up. That guy who, who's in the gym, in the zone, will always fuck you up when you're the one who stares at yourself in the mirror or quickly checks or listens to a nice podcast. The same with your business work. When you're trying to level up your business and you can't focus, you will get fucked by the guy who can. So let this video that you're watching right now be your first official practice to hyper-focusing. To stare into my eyes as I talk to you and to take your hand off the mouse and, and off the phone. This is for your benefit. And honestly, it's, it's for mine too. If you watch with more into, like enthusiasm, then I'm sure like the YouTube AdSense will pay me more or something, right? But I, the thing is, I didn't know this stuff. Three years ago in 2020, I was working for nine pounds an hour, so about $10, in a homeless accommodation, doing like customer service kind of shit. Nine pounds an hour is what I was working for overnight as well. I was doing night shifts. But at the same time, I used to try and do some work on my laptop, like inside of my job. And I would try and learn these online businesses. I literally was trying like seven businesses at once to try and think like what would stick. I was trying drop shipping and I actually made a few sites that made like a little bit of money. And I used to resell like girls clothing and shit that I saw that was going like viral on, on eBay and Depop, like these other websites that you can sell on. I saw where it was going popular there and then I've made my own drop shipping site and then I would like send like traffic from like Instagram, you know, like I was learning the ropes, right? I wrote some eBooks, I made some YouTube videos, I tried rapping, like I'm not even joking, I literally tried becoming a rapper. I was just trying everything, bro. I was broke, I, didn't, I wasn't in like the education system anymore, I had no direction. I literally tried becoming a rapper, like I was there watching like how to rap guides and I made one, like I wrote one like rap down. <laughs> animation as well, I thought animation was kind of cool so I downloaded it, like I got, um, you know, like a pirated, like cracked version of the software, like Adobe animation or flash, whatever it's called. And I'm like drawing something, then the next frame, you you make it move, a, you know, like animations, like those little cartoons that move around and stuff. I was trying that, I was trying coding. So coding three years ago at the start of the lockdown was very popular. Lots of people were were linking this, this online website called like Free Code Camp. And I was on there literally trying to like, you know, go through it. I was trying everything and you might be in that stage right now. You're literally just looking online, just trying to get some ideas of like, how do you actually go about making some money? And of course, guess what? I made no progress. Cause when you're trying like six businesses <laughs> at once, you're not gonna make any real progress. But the progress that we're looking for in that moment is simply just to decide which business we wanna take forward. 
And for me, the one that I took forward and also what I would recommend to you and to everyone out there, which is simply the best business. Like, let me, let me make this very clear. It is the best business that is out there. This is the new gold rush. This is the new opportunity for wealth. For previous generations, it was the housing boom and, and the internet businesses and all this shit, right? I'm telling you right now that there is a gold rush that you might be missing out on. It, there is literally the best opportunity that we have to make money these days. And guess what? It's through social media. It's simply through social media, growing a social media following and then selling them something. This is the new meta of making money. I'm trying all these different things and I settle on YouTube. YouTube's something that I could do for years. I moved back home to my parents' home and every single day I'm just putting hours into YouTube. I'm learning it more than everyone else. I see the guys who had a million subscribers, two million subscribers in the niche that I started. I started at literally zero subscribers, right? Three years ago in the self-improvement niche. And I see these guys up there and I just think to myself, I can, I can overtake them. I can take what, I want to take what they've got. Every single person told me the self-improvement niche was too saturated. But when a man is hungry, you can't tell him shit. And so day in, day out, I'm putting hours into learning YouTube, into being on camera. I'm reading for hours. I stopped all of my bad habits. I've made lots of videos about that. Like literally I had zero, zero bad habits. 100% of my day was productive and it still is. You can't compete with a guy who's this fucking ruthless. It's six six thirty right now. Apart from exercising today, like you know, hitting my workout and eating. I'll be working till about nine PM. You can't come like th these people at the top that you see, they can't compete with a guy like me and maybe like you if you can instill this drive. So I had this idea that yeah, of course I can take over these guys. So I'm growing my YouTube channel. And it's a slow growth. I start in May 2020 and it takes me seven months to get to a thousand subscribers, which is fairly slow. No one ever gave me a handout. No one ever shared my videos. These days, one person makes a video about me and gets like five, 10,000 subscribers. It took me seven months of, of two, three videos a week by myself to get to a thousand subscribers, making no money. Then that December, around 1,000 subscribers, I started online coaching. This was like my first online business, right? So on, online coaching is something that you could try. I wouldn't recommend it totally though. That's where you charge people for your time to hop on a video call with them and to give them advice about something that you've just done. So if for example, you've quit watching porn, you could literally market that. You could set up like, you know, the website, it's nice and easy to do. And you could just send some people there, you know, you make some YouTube videos that get some views and you tell them, oh, click the link in the description and they can book a call with you for like $40 for an hour, which straight away is, is more than what, like literally 99% of the world make, right? So as soon as you start coaching, even with no real experience other than like, yeah, like I've, I've been going to the gym for a few months so I can show you how to also go to the gym or yeah, I improve my diet. Oh, I quit playing video games. So if you're a video gamer and you want me to help you, then just book a call with me. You can literally set it to like $49 an hour and straight, like there's no reason why anyone in the world is making less than that, to be honest, because you can literally just start an online coaching business today. There's no, do you know what I mean? But that's still like a terrible business compared to what we're about to do. So I did the coaching thing. I made some money doing that. I started to make like 500 pounds a month, a thousand pounds a month. I had like a couple of clients consistently, but it was draining on me. And, and when you have so many guys who you're helping empathetically, like it just fucking drains you. Then in 2021, I made an online course. An online course is like, a, it's kind of like a playlist of videos that you make private, that you package and sell for, you know, really rich people. And I made this course for $200. And once it was set up, it was just selling without me. I sent some like, you know, some traffic there from my YouTube channel and make some videos and link it there. And this course ended out I released it at exactly the same time that a video that I had previously made on the same topic blew up. So I made a video near the start of my, like literally one of the first ever videos that I actually made on YouTube, even before I even like started YouTube. 
And that video was about like how to build your aesthetic body. That might have been like how you found me originally. How to build your aesthetic body, no bullshit guide. That video blew up at the exact same time that I was just about ready to release a course that I had been secretly working on called How to Build an Aesthetic Body. It was by the luck, who knows? It was just totally, totally lucky in that sense that the video blew up, I sold the course for $200 and suddenly I started making 10K a month from then on. I've never made under 10K a month from, uh, from July, 2021. I grow that a little bit, you know, the YouTube channel's growing, but I made a bunch of bad, like, business mistakes. You know, I didn't, I wasn't, like, seeing myself as a businessman. I saw myself more of, like, a leader of, like, a, a movement that was global. And so I didn't really think about the business stuff. And so our income grew to some levels, but our expenses did. And suddenly the YouTube channel became, like, a massive thing that we had, like, 15 employees and I was paying, like, some people, like, so much fucking money that I was just, like, losing money. Like, it just wasn't even ROI positive and I was doing it just because I wanted to spread the message of, of self-improvement to people and so we, we grew to a, such a large YouTube following. You saw, like, one and a half million in, in just, like, a year after that, which is really fast growth. But then one day it just hit me. It was like, what the fuck is this? Spreading this message. It's like, yeah, sure, it's nice to do that. But my videos are edited, my videos are clickbait. I'm, I'm tired of this fucking top seven ways to get girls and all this shit that you see, like these shit fucking YouTubers make. I was tired of this and I wanted to make some videos that actually really fucking help. And for me, the videos that have most helped me are these unfiltered, literally just, the guy just presses record and just gives you as much wisdom as possible in each video. His shitty team don't, don't like, you know, like change anything to do with it or anything. Literally all I want is the smartest people across the world to literally just record videos like this where they just press record and just keep talking for like fucking three hours about a specific concept. So I was like, yeah, fuck it. Like, why don't I just do that? So suddenly I fired everyone and my income didn't really go down that much. It was about 40,000 pounds. I fired everyone, so we didn't have any business expenses. I moved back home to my parents' house, so I don't have any personal expenses. So now I, I started to profit like a good amount. And then I was scared for a while. This is gonna happen to you, so this is relevant, right? Especially with the business we're gonna talk about today. I was scared for a while to make more money because the nature of, of making money through social media is that a lot of people out there have got really fucked up beliefs when it comes to money. And so when an influencer, like when a YouTuber has something to sell, a lot of people automatically brand that guy as like as a scammer, a salesman, and you know, people will comment mean things. And I was genuinely, I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I was scared of that. I literally had a fear of seeing these comments of being called like a scammer or, oh, Hamza's got a new product to sell. Oh, I'm just trying to make money. I used to see people comment this and it used to scare me because, you know, that's your, your brand that people are talking about. That's like, you know, people are talking about not just me, but like, like literally the, the YouTube channel, but like they're talking about me as a person is like, oh yeah, I'm just just trying, trying to make some money. And you know, they say it in a negative way. And that fucking scared me for a while. I had fear because of this. And so I stayed like caged in and I thought, that like people would like me more if I didn't try to like sell to them. And so for a while, it's like I didn't live to my potential. My, my purpose layer as a masculine man was to achieve financial freedom and I wasn't doing it because I was scared of what like these fucking like random guys would comment. These guys who, who have never commented before, I've never seen them comment before. And I was just scared of like what some random fucking like 13 year old might say and, and say like, oh, well Hamza's just trying to make some money. Up until, I had a conversation with another YouTuber called Andrew Kirby. Andrew Kirby is like this guy who used to make like self-improvement YouTube videos. You might have seen some of his videos back then and he doesn't really make them these days. But I ended up connecting with him and I just you know, sent him a screenshot. We were just talking about money and stuff. I sent him a screenshot of how much I was making and he ended up sending me like a nine minute like loom screen recording video, you know, with his like face on where he was like, oh, hey, Hamza, you know, like the money you're making, like 20K from courses, 20K from AdSense, that's really good, but you could be making a lot more. And like, he, he's saying it with enthusiasm of like, you know, you could do this, you could do this, and man, you could make so much more, I'm so excited for you. Like literally just, he was enthusiastic about making more money. And something just clicked and I was like, that's how I should be. Here is like a young businessman who, be, who essentially like retired himself at like age 22. Like he became very successful, saved up, you know, like, oh, like um, $1 million or something. Now he never has to work again, right? This, this guy I'm talking about. 
and just seeing his enthusiasm for making money just changed my mindset and I was like that's what I should be like and suddenly I can't even tell you how important this is for me and, and one day you're gonna feel this I had like this huge weight lifted out of my brain this this constraints this these bullshit beliefs that if I was a businessman that would make me a bad person and suddenly like I, I got hit with this like fucking nostalgia of like I started this all as an entrepreneur because I fucking love entrepreneurship I love business and I started to like pretend that that wasn't me because I thought more people online would like me I, I Truthfully, not to be offensive to those guys, but I thought like fucking like, you know, more broke guys would like me if I was saying to them like, oh, well, yeah, see guys, I don't care about money. But then I always had this nagging thought in my mind of like, but you do, of course you do. And I realized like, that doesn't make me a bad person for wanting to make money. You want to make more money. Like sane people want to make more money but there's some guys who are like at the bottom of the fucking like barrel you know like the bottom of the bucket crabs who every single one of them is broke right and they will fucking criticize you as you get onto your business when you make some profit and you want to announce it to your friends or maybe online i'm telling you right now that you will experience the same kind of guys that i did and they will make you feel like shit they will make you question yourself they will make you think that you're some kind you're doing something illegal, that you're a scammer, that you're just a salesman, that you've changed. And for so long I was a pussy, I was afraid of seeing this. No longer. This doesn't mean that I'm I'm some dickhead YouTuber who's gonna put like a three minute advertisement. I've never done one of those like cringe like sponsors there. Uh, but first, the, uh, like you know like uh, Lubin skincare pro. Oh, you know you know if, if if this company didn't sponsor me, I'd still be talking about them. like no you wouldn't you fucking dumb. Every fucking skincare video, every like most YouTube videos is literally just the guy just like sponsored. It. I've never done one of that shit right. So I'm not gonna like sell out. But fuck me, like seeing seeing this guy's enthusiasm, Andrew Kirby, seeing his enthusiasm for, for my work and to make more money just suddenly hit me and I was like, you know what? That's it. Making money is sick because it's kind of like a game and it's also just, it's good to make money. So this was a major belief that was broken and I made a new product, a, a kind of like a community. A com I made an online community called Adonis Academy which is kind of like we have this platform and we're very close. It's a very private community. It's not like a Discord So I'm not trying to sell you. I'm just explaining the, the business that I made, like the product that I made, because we're going to get you to make one by the end of this video. You don't don't buy it or anything, right? right? I'm just going to explain it to you. Relax. Don't like think, oh, he's just trying to subtly pitch it to me. It's not for you. I made something called Adonis Academy, which is like this online private community. It's not on Discord, but you could kind of imagine it kind of like an exclusive Discord server, but it's not on Discord. It's on a different website called school.com. And the idea behind it was that I saw my Discord server used to be quite valuable for the people who would join. But recently it's got like 200,000 members and it's like, it's just fucking, it's like, a, it's like a massive social media. Who gives a fuck? It's just massive now. It's, there's no closeness to it. I remembered when my social, when my Discord had a few hundred members and we used to be so close, we'd hop on calls. Like I'd just do, you know, like I used to charge people a thousand dollars for my calls. Literally, I'm not even taking the piss. I used to charge people over one thousand dollars for an hour of my time on a coaching call, and they would still leave good reviews because people thought that it was worth it. And on my Discord server, I just do it for free. I just hop on calls with people. I just help them just because it was like fun for me. And suddenly the Discord server just grew up to like hundreds of thousands, and I've never once made any money through Discord. And it just hit me one day, I was like, what is the point of this? It's this mass place which doesn't feel close anymore and I stopped using it myself. And so I had the idea then, what if I make more of a private small group? I price point it really high so I make it really expensive. Hundreds of dollars a month. And that suddenly I started to think like, oh shit, you know what? I would, I would serve the guys who joined. I would be close to them. If someone was paying me, 400 500 dollars a month to join like this community this this private community i would make it exceptional i would give them everything i would wake up and think about how i can help the guys in there i would make sure that like every single day we're, we're hopping on a call together just to have like a coffee or something to make or you know to eat some dinner to make sure that they're not doing it alone because like i understand like I, you know i've been there myself and i'll make sure we can do like we can meet up in person i'm starting to get so many ideas i'm like wait I'm going to make a fuck ton of money from this. 
So if you want to know the real numbers, I'm not going to show you any fucking proof. You either believe me or you don't. But the truth is the YouTube channel and the courses that I sold made 40 to 50,000 pounds consistently like per month, like for multiple, multiple months in a row. But we always had those expenses. We had like the 35,000 pounds that I was spending in, in employee wages. And then my lifestyle in Dubai and stuff was like 10,000 a month. Now I don't have my lifestyle. I live at my parents' house for free. And I also don't have any, like any employees. So suddenly it's like, we have like doing the 40K, 50,000 pounds that I used to make. And suddenly I'm making an extra 30 to 40,000 pounds from this new product. It's the last day of March, 2023. And in this month, I've made over a hundred thousand dollars. I don't expect you to believe me because if I saw this video a few years ago, I would have thought, yeah, right, scammer, liar, whatever. I totally understand because I used to have like that limiting belief myself. But just if you are one of these guys, like if there's any of these guys watching who think, oh yeah, right, you made 100K per month. Yeah, doubt it, bro. If there's any of these guys watching, I really don't want to be insulting to you, but I promise you, if you right now, you just thought like, yeah, he's got to be lying about the 100K. I promise you. The beliefs that you have about money are the most important thing. I promise you that you can save years of your journey just by investigating your beliefs and trying to think why you think this is impossible, why this is unreasonable. How do you think people become millionaires? Well, they make 100K a month. They just become really fucking successful in their business. And you see these guys online that talk about, oh yeah, well last year we did 7 million and we did this and we did this. And it doesn't even register in your brain. You think, no, he's got to be lying. And so you close it off. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, dude. Yeah, right, dude. You close it off and you just go back to watching one of those like clickbait videos, like how to make $500 a day passively. You know, like the fucking thumbnail of the finance group like this, or like the top seven ways, you know, they're holding money there. The top seven ways to make 500. You go back to those videos because that's something that you can imagine. And I promise you that if you do that, if you go back to those videos, if you go back to just where you're comfortable trying to make, you know, $100 a day or something, You'll never actually make any progress. Your beliefs about money totally, totally cause how much money you make. You saw that my belief about money changed when I spoke to this guy, Andrew Kirby. And suddenly I doubled how much money I was making in one conversation. But just because he destroyed a belief in my mind that was something like, I believe making money makes me a bad person. The way that this guy that I spoke to had spoke to me, his belief like kind of implanted into my mind that making money is awesome and it's exciting and let's be enthusiastic about it. And then there was nothing holding me back. It's like that, that thing that was holding me back, the constraint was just destroyed. There's another constraint that I'm on now, like who knows what it is just now, you know, I'm still trying to find out what the next thing is. $100,000 in March, 2023. I have no expenses. I'm soon going to be making so much money that I'm literally going to have to juggle it around multiple banks and it's going to feel unsafe because in the UK, banks only protect you for like £85,000. Like if you have more than £85,000 in a bank, it's like, it's not safe. I'm genuinely going to have to open up like as many banks as possible to start storing the profit that I've got. I don't expect you to fully believe me I've got nothing to sell you. I have my Adonis Academy, but it's not really for you. It's more for just guys who just wanna be like social on self-improvement and stuff. And so for you, like the young guy who really, really wants to get into business, I have literally nothing to sell you. I don't expect you to believe me, but if you can, or if you can just be open to it and follow for the rest of this guide, I think you're gonna find this very fucking valuable. I've never been given money. I've never been given a handout. I wish, kind of wish I was in some places. No one ever helped me with like my YouTube channel to help me grow faster. No one ever shared my videos. No one ever gave me like free money. My father's a taxi driver. That like, I haven't had those that starting point that you may think. You know, like if if the first thought when someone's making a lot of money, the first limited belief you can have is like, oh, he's he's lying. He's a scammer or anything like this. Then it's like, oh well, he was given it. His parents are really rich or something. It's, my mum has never worked. She's always been at like a Muslim housewife and my dad's a taxi driver. And before he was a taxi driver, he owned a shop, a corner store. No one ever gave me like a free handout. 
like my, you know, I'm not being ungrateful. My parents, of course, they like. I still get to live in a fucking house. I still get to go to school. But I mean, no one ever gave me, you know, like, oh, hey, son, like, you know, here's some trust fund money or some shit. Never had that. Never went to a private school or any any bullshit like that, right? This is possible. We're gonna talk now about something which I find very interesting. And if you've ever played video games, I think you'll find this interesting too. There is a new meta. And before actually, you know what? Before I go through this section, I just wanna remind you, your success in business, in life, in relationships, and how much this video helps you, comes down to you being focused. We've just went through, you know, my story and stuff, and maybe you found it interesting. Usually like attention, your, your focus will dip down every section that we go over. Take this moment right now, just to remember, if you really want this to help you, stay focused. Don't scroll down to the comments. Don't quickly check your phone. Don't open up another tab, you know, just listening to, just, oh yeah, just listening to this like a podcast. This is gonna be like two hours of your life. If you really want this to help you, stare into my eyes as I talk and just give it your full attention. Instead of continuously watching 10 minutes, 20 minutes of YouTube, five times a day watching these shit videos, which don't even help you. It's like, why not just put in two hours just watching this video? And I guarantee you won't need to watch other finance, money-related videos for weeks after this. It's worth your time. I'm going to expose all of the secrets to you, step by step. At the end of this video, I'll also ask you if you think that this is worth more than like $2,000 that people charge courses for or something. And I'm literally just making it for free for you. Obviously, technically, it's not free. You have to put your time into it, but you get what I mean. There is a new meta for making money. Have you heard of the, the word before, meta, M-E-T-A? So meta is like this, kind of like this video game of word, a, a word that's used, like a, <clears throat> it's a, an, an, what's the word called? An acronym, acronym, right? Meta, M-E-T-A, and it's something that video gamers, like nerds kind of use to describe the game that they play. M-E-T-A, meta, and it stands for most effective tactic available, meta. So I used to play v League of Legends. I, I was like quite a big gamer, right? I used to play League of Legends and every, I was never like that amazing, right? But the nerds of League of Legends, you know, on Reddit or whatever, every like couple of months, they would talk about the meta, that the meta was changing. The meta is the most effective way to like play the game. And so, you know, there'd be like a change by the people who made League of Legends, like Riot Games, you know, like the people who, who design all the code and stuff. And they'd end up making like a patch saying like, oh, like we've changed this champion, you know, we've updated this champion and he's going to do like 5% extra damage and he can now jump over walls. And, you know, it seems kind of small up until those top tier nerds who are really good at the game show some new like tactic that they can use because of this small update. And suddenly there becomes like a new meta, there becomes a new way to play the game that's actually better than the way we were currently playing. And so the guy who then follows this new meta and does the thing that's really working well, usually wins like nine times out of 10. Is this making sense to you? If you've not played video games, you might not understand, but essentially there is always a meta in everything that we do, which is like, it's like the most effective way to do the thing. So in League of Legends, it used to be like to play like these these champions, you know, these characters that had like loads of health and loads of defense, like tanks, right? Like really like really like like buff like chariot uh, champions or some shit, right? And that that used to be the meta. But then that th there was a new item that was released that's really good for this particular kind of champion. And suddenly the the meta for like ADC, like champions who've got guns, suddenly that's like, oh shit, that's like how you play these days. That's okay, that's the best one. And so the guys with guns are doing really, really well up until suddenly there's another update or someone, you know, some nerd has been experimenting with something and he realizes, wait, we can counter these, these guys with guns with this kind of tactic. And so that new tactic becomes the meta. Does that make sense? And, and you see this in real life in the UFC. I'm not like such a UFC fan or anything, but this right now, it seems like the meta of like the Khabib Dagestanian um, wrestling. So Khabib came in and then there's been other guys who have come in from like the same gym as him who have been training in the exact style of wrestling that seems to destroy everyone in the UFC, you know, in like the fight cages. And I don't know, like I've not been watching, so maybe it's already happened, but I assume that that kind of wrestling style will dominate. It's the meta up until there'll be some kind of new style that counters it really well. And that new style will be the new meta. This is how the meta works, right? 
If you play with an old meta, you're up against a disadvantage. Imagine being one of those guys who, who is playing the old meta and then Khabib comes in and does this like wrestling style that's so fucking effective that you've never trained against it. Imagine being the guys with the guns on League of Legends and there's a, suddenly there's a new meta, this new item that's really good for this other kind of champion and he just fucking destroys you. This is the new meta. And there is a new meta when it comes to making money. If I've done my job explaining this right, you should be getting very fucking interested at this because since there's a new meta, that likely means that you're actually playing the old one. That we've all played the old meta for most of our lives. Can you think about what the, what the old meta, the effective tactic for making money would have been? What is the old meta for making money? Think about it. What, what, what was like widely known as like, yep, this is how we make money. This is how we like, you know, become successful. What was it? It's not like a particular business or anything. It's a life path. And it's so ingrained in us. Like it was the assumed meta for so fucking long that it might not even be in your brain right now. What is it? The education system. Go to school, get good grades, get a good job, be a good boy, get a promotion, buy a house, mortgage, sweet, happy. That used to be the old meta. That used to be like the best way to live your life. It genuinely did. Like these days it's like, we know like, shut up grandpa. We know like the fucking, you know, education system's just stupid as fuck. We know that even most degrees are just shit anyway. Like missing 99% of degrees is shit. We know this stuff, right? Anyone who fucking these days tells you like, oh yeah, but go to school. It's like, we look at it like as if it's, it's if it's you know just stupid, we knew, we know that that's wrong. But that was the old meta. And so you might think that the new meta is that of just making money online. But it's not, because that's too broad. Making money online comes down to 50 different businesses, and this is like, you know, the shit videos that say like, oh, the, the top nine side hustles that you can make that will get you $500, and it's just a shit video of someone saying like, the same things as always. Number one, affiliate marketing. Number two, dropshipping, ebooks, agency, YouTube. Like, they're just saying shit, right? They're the new meta. You want to know exactly what it is. It's becoming a synthesizer. And if you can understand this word, you're going to go on to making a lot of money. Synth synthesizer. First, I'm just going to tell you a very quick story. Just a few days ago, I hopped on a call with someone. And he's a young man and he wanted to start making money online. And... He, he said that his purpose could be to help people. That's, you know, like, it seemed kind of broad. Yeah, like, I want to help people, and if I can make money doing it, then that's awesome. So I asked him, okay, well, how can you do that? And he says, well, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, like, some degrees right now. I could go to university and get, like, a counseling degree or something, and then I could start, or, like, you know, therapy degree or some shit, and I could start becoming, like, a therapist for people. What do you think? He asked me this, right? I, bro, I chuckled. I honestly chuckled. I'm saying this to him, right? Bro, you're going to go to university for three, four years, get this degree, and then find out if this life path is for you, and then find out if you enjoy helping people with their problems. No offense, bro, but that's actually kind of stupid. And he looks at me a bit weird, it's like, but he's looking kind of excited because he can tell that I've got a better idea for him. I'm like, you want to find out if helping people is your purpose? Start doing coaching calls today. Have, like, you know, there's a five step process to doing coaching calls. Literally, just set up your fucking call calendar, which you can go find like on any like website or some shit. Set up your call calendar, send the link to people, and then just send some people to that link. I said, you can charge that today at $29, $39, $49 an hour. Go make a bunch of YouTube videos about the specific problem that you're going to help people with. So for him, we said, okay, what well, about quitting video games? And it's like, okay, go make a bunch of videos like how to quit video games in 14 days, how I quit playing video games, how I quit playing League of Legends. Go make a bunch of videos and inside every video just say, oh yeah, like, click on that top link in the description and I'll personally help you with, with quitting video games. We can do it together and charge $49 an hour. And guess what? You can set that up today. And you will make three times as much as those people with a counseling or a, or a therapy degree. Today. There's people going to university, studying for years, getting into debt, and they will make less money than you today. This is the new meta. Utilizing 
social media, the internet, and certain business models so you can shortcut the process and you can genuinely start making money fast. Again, this isn't some clickbait video. There's, I've got nothing to sell you, so relax. This is the new meta. And if you're not playing this meta, you will get fucking destroyed. If you're not playing this meta, you'll be the equivalent to the guy like tapping out as you're getting like wrestled by the guy who's playing the meta. To go to school for four years to just to find out if, if you like, you know, just to hop on a call with someone and help them with their problems. You can do that today. This is what blows my mind because not only can you do it today, you can make a lot more money doing it. And you might think, oh, but you know, what, what, like, shouldn't I be qualified to do this? You know, shouldn't I get the therapy degree or something first, the counseling degree? Guess what, bro? Most people don't give a fuck about your official qualifications. You know, I mentioned that course that I made that made 10K a month, right? I've made more in one year than most personal trainers, qualified personal trainers who have studied and got the qualification and, and some of them have a sports science degree or other them have like, like personal training certificates. I made more as a guy with no qualification in one year than most personal trainers make in five. I didn't ever get the personal training degree. You know what's very interesting? I'm just gonna very quickly just make a point here that qualifications and degrees actually make you broke, you know why? Because before you become a personal trainer, you can hop on and be a fitness coach online, a health coach, and you can literally charge hundreds of dollars of an hour for your time. You can literally charge hundreds of dollars an hour just calling yourself a coach, a coach, like being a coach doesn't need any qualifications. It's just like if someone likes you and thinks that you're valuable, they'll pay you for it, right? And of course you have to like demonstrate that you know what you're talking about, right? You can genuinely start like a health coaching business, a fitness coaching business and make $100, $200, $300 an hour. And the moment that that same person who's making so much money thinks, oh, but you know, a qualification would be really nice. The moment that he gets the same personal training qualification as everyone else, how much he can make just goes back down to $30, $30 an hour. Because now he's the same as everyone else who's got the qualification. The same with the therapy degree. You could have, let's say, a big YouTube channel where you talk about specific mental problems and you've got good experience of this. You've really helped yourself with it. You've helped a couple of people so you know you're good at this and you know that you're good on like calls and stuff and you charge $100 an hour for it. Or let's say even $300 an hour. You target like high level um, CEOs. You target high level YouTubers and you say to them like, I'm going to help you be more productive because there's some deep psychological shit that we can uncover that will help you become more like high performance, right? And you're making $300 an hour just being a, a, like a mental health coach. And the moment that you get your therapist degree or your counseling degree, you then have to price yourself roughly at the same as every fucking other counselor or therapist, which is like $50 or $100 an hour. Degrees and, and qualifications and certifications literally make you broke these days. That is the old meta. And the thing is, for most young people, the kind of people that we want to work with, they're not going to ask you like, oh, so what, what year did you graduate in? Can you show me proof of your degree? Are they fuck, bro? No one has ever fucking asked me for my, my degree. I've got a degree, right? No one's ever asked me for that. No one's ever asked me before we hop on a call to, you know, I'm like, I'm speaking, I'm going to teach him about mental health. No one's ever messaged me like, oh, but you know, bro, I would buy this, but only if you had a mental health. Shut the fuck up, bro. If so, like no one's ever even messaged me that. Because if someone wants an official therapist with 20 years experience, they'll go there. The beauty of this new meta is that people will come, not because you have this, this certain qualification in your fucking CV. They'll come because of you. You become the qualification yourself. You become like the professional yourself. So that word that I mentioned to you, synthesizer, the new meta is to become a synthesizer. There's a process of being a synthesizer, right? So a synthesizer is kind of like someone who takes, let's, let's make it like this. You right now are watching a bunch of videos. You're watching podcasts, YouTube channels, you're reading books, you're consuming Twitter and stuff, right? You would be a synthesizer if you took that knowledge that you were getting from all these different sources and packaged it together to help someone with a specific problem. 
It's exactly what you're seeing in this video. For example, what you're seeing in this video, the knowledge which I'm giving you in this video has taken me years to get myself, right? I made the business myself. I tried multiple different business models. I've watched maybe a thousand hours of, of content, of learning, of reading business books and everything, right? And I'm putting that into like a two hour video for you. I have synthesized probably five, probably about more than a thousand hours of learning and implementing into a two hour video for, for you. This is me synthesizing. The process of being a synthesizer is that you consume content, you learn, you use it in your life, and then you just teach it in a faster way. So let me give you some examples. Have you seen Andrew Huberman's podcast, Huberman Lab? He is a great synthesizer. Because before Andrew Huberman came out, you know, some nerds online would say like, oh, well, can you cite the study? You know, like they talk about research and stuff, but usually not that much, right? If you've ever looked at those websites and you know, when someone does cite the research and you ever click on the link, you realize it's like, you can't even fucking read it, can you? It's like, it's literally just in like nerd speak. They're just like, it's barely like readable. You can only see the abstract without paying for it anyway. So it's like people used to say like, oh, can you cite the study and stuff? But we, none of us, eat, like normal people understood like that scientific research that someone would mention, right? Andrew Huberman came along. He understood that research. He would read the papers with his team and then he would make a podcast where us like non sciencey folk could understand it. He synthesized these articles that usually were just like, you know, they were like these scientists would literally spend a lot of time making these studies and this research and they would upload it to like these articles, these journals and no normal people would even read it. So Huberman came along with his team. They'd distill, like, you know, they'd read over all of the data, they'd structure it in a really nice podcast, and they synthesize it for us so that we can use that big thing. And now he's got, he makes more than a million dollars a year, easily more than a million dollars a year. His competitors, who also are professors at, you know, Harvard University or something, they all make like 200k. Huberman's becoming five to 10 times more successful than the guys that he works with in his universities because he became a synthesizer online. That's powerful. To understand more about this, this process of synthesizing, I want to send you to Andrew Kirby's uh, like little community. So he's, remember I just said he's the one I, I went on a call with and he helped me out and everything. He's not like me asking me to do this or anything, but he has like this free community where he really talks about like being a synthesizer. I saw it like a little while ago. So I thought, yeah, I'll link it for this video. So you can just go click. It'll be a link in the description and you can tell him like I sent you there or something as well. And I'm giving him like some value back for what he gave me. And um, he explains in his community exactly what like synthesizing is in the process. He writes really like cleanly, like better than I would explain this concept to you. But hopefully you understand the basics of this, right? Being a synthesizer is literally just, we take a bunch of data, we take a bunch of, you know, information that we've seen in podcasts and YouTube videos, you know, the stuff we've been consuming, the YouTubers that you're subscribed to. And then we literally, we learn it, we implement it, we take action. And then we just go back online and we just teach it in our own words to make it more applicable to like to the human race. The reason why this is so powerful is because it's incredibly fast to make money. In three years of my business, I cracked 100K a month. It still blows my mind. I'm not talking about a yearly salary. I'm talking about in March 2023 and we haven't even finished this month. It's still Friday the 31st. I made 100K. It would take a doctor, what is it, five, six years of education and then multiple years to build up to literally get onto a salary, an annual yearly salary of 100K. I make that in a month and I'm just a guy in a bathrobe. This is the new meta. And if you're not taking part in this, you are, you are going to be left behind. And a beautiful thing about being a synthesizer, you know, like what we're talking about here, which I'll explain more soon. A beautiful extra benefit is that it is actually extremely purposeful. In the old days, it used to be that you would need to go to school, get a job and, you know, try and level up in that career whilst knowing that there was something else you may have been interested in whilst knowing that you had like a masculine purpose elsewhere. These days, like the way that I'm living my life, I'm following my purpose. I'm following my passion and my interests. 
And I'm just making a fuck ton of money whilst doing that. Think about how incredible that is to say. I am, I get to follow like being a synthesizer, which you can do, and I'll, I'll walk you through the entire process. As a synthesizer, you literally get to follow your real interest. You get to fulfill your purpose, and you make more money than those people at the top of like the education system, like the doctors and the um, software developers and all that shit. So there is a step-by-step -step process for being a synthesizer, for this new meta of making money. There's five steps. Learn, implement, teach, brand, and monetize. Learn, implement, teach, brand, monetize. Five steps and we're gonna go over them in this video. The goal of this section that we've just covered was for you to understand the new meta. If right now you're a little bit unsure and you got a little bit distracted, It'd be worth your time to just rewind and just rewatch this section at normal speed, just so you totally understand like what we're talking about here. You're genuinely gonna make more money if you do that. Now for this section, for section two on learning, this is the first real part of being a synthesizer. So the goal of this section right now is for you to understand that consuming content isn't actually a bad thing. You've seen online of how negative people are about consuming content, haven't you? You've seen like, okay, consuming content is a bad habit. We don't do that. And even people say, like so many people say this, right? Stop watching self-improvement videos. Stop watching podcasts. Oh, I stopped watching Hamza because you know, in the end you've got to, you've got to make sure you take action. That sounds so true, doesn't it? You stop watching self-improvement content. Stop watching, you know, like podcasts, or whatever. If you're not going to take action, that sounds so true. It's actually totally false. You see, the first step of being an, a synthesizer is to allow to, your interest to take you to wherever you, you want to learn and to just understand that learning in and of itself is a purely positive thing. To understand that if you spend two hours watching an Andrew Huberman podcast, that's actually like a good, valuable use of your time. <laughs> oh, I just got fucking mad al allergies just then. Fuck me. <laughs> I think it's just like breathed in a piece of dust or something and my nose just started getting burned in and my eyes just started tearing up. <laughs> Apology, I was so, so close to sneezing. Oh, I've got bad allergies, bro. I've got like a air filter behind me I should turn on. <laughs> that was so annoying, man. I was, I was in a good flow of recording and I think like one piece of dust just went up my nose or something. <laughs> 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 so look a lot of people online say that consuming content is a bad thing and i have for a while but i've realized now that actually you need to consume the content and it can be you know youtube videos it can be podcasts it can be books i think books are probably like the the best part i think books are actually the best way to go about it but you need to consume and learn to become a synthesizer and especially to learn from the the people who are quite in the the mainstream of our niche. So for example, if you're a guy who likes to learn online and improve his life, there's gonna be some people who are rising up right now, like for example, Andrew Huberman. And so you could watch his podcasts and people will tell you that, oh, but that's consuming content, that's a bad thing, but it's truly not because one, you're learning, and two, even if you're not gonna use that information right away, you should, but let's just say, you know, some guys end up watching but not really taking action, and so we all say, oh, well, yeah, you shouldn't, you know, you've gotta t make sure you take action. But the truth is, the reason why we learn is so that our brain, our, like, you know, those neurons and stuff, they start to connect the dots and we start to form new beliefs. Because those beliefs, even if we don't immediately go and take action, those beliefs do start to change our actions in the future. I didn't actually make much progress for the first few months of like my YouTube and my self-improvement journey in 2020 because I refused to watch content. I refused, I literally spent all day just, you know, taking action and stuff. And I made good progress and, you know, in my fitness and stuff. But the truth was, I didn't make good progress in my YouTube channel and my business in making money. Why? Because I didn't know exactly what to do. You know, it seems simple. Yeah, just upload videos. But when you didn't ha know, like, the, you know, the monetization tactics and the marketing ideas and everything that you use, that you get from learning from other people, then you, it's like you're, you're shooting in the dark. Like, why should we 
you know, just learn through doing is, it sounds so awesome. Why would you do that when there's literally someone who's done it, who can just tell you what to do to get to his point and then we can go faster than him. So it sounds cool and there's gonna be, you can go and have a look. There'll be like some, maybe not now, but like usually if I made this video, there's always like some self-improvement bots, like some guys who like literally, I don't know, either brain dead or they're literally just fucking AI robots or something who comment the same thing like, oh yeah, but you know, learning without taking action is a, isn't good for you. It's like, it actually fucking is because learning in itself is valuable. I'm telling you as someone who, who didn't learn much for the first few months of his like self-improvement journey and just, you know, I just took action and I got shredded. Okay, sweet. You know, I was exercising loads fine, but I didn't make much progress in my business because I didn't know exactly what to do. And then when I started to like intuit, like really intentionally consume content, especially recently, intentionally learn from people who are better than me, more advanced. It's, it blows my mind that this is seen as negative these days. And I'm not saying this to like, hopefully encourage you, you get it, bro, watch my videos. I'm not saying it to encourage you to watch my videos. I'm saying because there's some people out there like Alex Hamozzi, Andrew Huberman, they, they do full length podcasts that are genuinely life changing. And to not watch them because you're scared of consuming content is silly. For the last good few months, and really in the last month, I've been very intentionally consuming like a lot of content. And I'm telling you right now, it is extremely valuable. Very, very valuable. For the last month, I've been watching like Alex Hamozzi videos, his videos, his every podcast he's done, every video he releases. I'm going through his entire channel, getting so many fucking good ideas. And yes, I'm implementing them, but you only get to implement and take action on the things that you actually learn in the first place. Trying to take action without knowing what to do is just stupid. It's like, a, like, for example, would we tell a beginner to just go to the gym and just, no, 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 don't, don't look at any stuff online. No, 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 don't, no, no, don't, don't try and get a workout routine. Just go to the gym. Sure, that can be advice, like, you know, some good advice for someone who's overthinking things. But the best case scenario before or maybe as soon as someone goes to the gym, we'll tell them, okay, before you do any, like, you know, like, risky shit in the gym, go online and go and watch the form videos of, like, the 50 exercises you're going to do. Go and watch, you know, like, how to squat safely. You'd tell them to learn that, wouldn't you? Of course we would. It's incredibly valuable. Think about that. How valuable, like how much difference will two guys be? One guy who researches how to lift weights correctly and he goes before like, you know, he, let's say he's in the gym right now, just before he's about to bench press, he learns. He goes onto the YouTube app and he searches how to bench press safely compared to the guy who just never does that because he says, yeah, I'm just, I'm just taking action. Yeah, yeah you, you got to do the work first. Ugh. Who's going to make better progress for their entire life? This guy. Now, of course, if this guy's like, you know, like a wimp and he now uses that to not take action and he's like, oh yeah, well, I'm not going to go to the gym up, you know, up until I'm really ready. Okay, fair enough. But that's like a different problem altogether. But if you're like a guy like us and you're, you know, you're masculine enough to want to take action, then it, learning is incredibly valuable. Learning from Alex and Mosey the last month has genuinely, I'm making a lot of money now and I swear to God, it's, it's because I'm literally just learning from people who are more intelligent and more advanced than I am. It's as simple as that. Now you might think, okay, this sounds true, but consuming content, you know, self-improvement videos and, and reading books, consuming content without taking action is a bad thing, right? I used to think so too, but I'm actually changing my mind on that because I've seen the same pattern in myself and also so many guys on self, you know, cause I, I've, I've done really well in self-improvement for myself, but then also like, you know, my YouTube channel is about self-improvement. So I've come across a lot of guys who've told me their story, right? I've probably like experienced more guys telling me about self-improvement than maybe like anyone else in the entire fucking world. When you really think about it, I'm probably in the top, like maybe there's 10 guys who are next to me in terms of men who have like, you know, heard about self-improvement problems. When you really think about how crazy that is, like how many guys would tell me their self-improvement stories because I've, I've got like a YouTube channel, which is almost 2 million subscribers in this niche, right? So I, I've got a, an, an understanding of what it takes to improve yourself way better than like a normal person does, right? And I'm telling you right now, I see the same pattern in probably around 30% of people. And that pattern, they always tell me is that they consumed this content for a while and always felt like they were wasting their time because they weren't taking action. And then they started to take action afterwards. 
And for a while, you know, when people would say this, I would say to them, yeah, yeah, you know, you've got to make sure you take action. But now when a guy says like, oh, Hamza, you know, I watch all the videos, I watch the podcast and stuff, but I'm not taking action. I tell them this story that I've spoke to so many guys who went through this phase of like consuming, but not taking action, consuming, but not implementing. And I tell them that I've seen this. It, it was what I was doing for a good few months before I even started self-improvement. I was watching the self-improvement videos, getting pissed off my, at myself thinking like, oh, well, I'm not being productive and you know, I'm not taking action. I realize now it's productive because it changes your beliefs and it makes you like agitated. You start to realize, you know, the life you could be living. And even if you're not taking action to that, you're thinking about it, which is still valuable. So we need to change right now this, this belief that we have that consuming content is a bad thing because this is how we learn in the modern day. We will take action, 100% we will take action, but of course, like how are you gonna know which action to take if you don't learn it in the first place? So this is exactly what you were gonna do for this step right now. Consume the content of intelligent people who are more advanced than you in a particular area that you're really interested in. So this'll be, for example, and this can be anything, right? You clicked on this video to, to make learn to make money, but we're gonna make money by our literal, by our real interest. So maybe your interest is actually money and finance and investing, but maybe it's, it's self-improvement, maybe it's semen retention, maybe it's exercising, maybe it's building a body that's really attractive, maybe it's getting girls, maybe it's, it's health, whatever it is, right? What is your real interest? If money didn't even exist, what is like your real interest, which real fucking like, like the thing that you just, your brain just thinks about all the time. Start to look at the best guys in there, the guys who are really intelligent look at some of the guys who are big influencers in that space but then look at some of the guys who are big like you know like the sciency like authority figures in that sense so for example there's fitness influencers who will teach you you know their personality and their like you know their kind of like fun mindsets real mindset to doing things but then there's like the fitness like science guys and they'll teach you the real research look at both consume their co content read their their books learn the, from their podcasts and, and learn from where they've learned and this is incredibly valuable because you probably have done this for some topic already haven't you you've probably like if you imagine right now there's probably some kind of topic of life that you just for fun watch youtube videos on and it's kind of educational it's like for, for a lot of guys in our space it'll be like fitness you literally for fun will watch guys literally just lifting weights and telling you about their diets maybe that's that's you maybe it's like you know it's a different topic but there is one already for you isn't there and you've probably thought to yourself like I mean, I would kind of enjoy doing that. You know, the YouTuber that you're watching, the fitness YouTuber or something. You've probably thought to yourself like, yeah, that would probably be like kind of like, like a nice job in, in some ways. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't do it like this, but I'd probably do it like this. But nah, nah, I can't really do it. I probably wouldn't be su so successful doing that. Very interesting, isn't it? So there is a topic that you you already are interested in and it might literally be about money. So that's also like, you know, what, what you're interested in by watching this is probably is money as well. Fill up your mind of the thoughts of these intelligent people. And if you can go to the next level, most guys will just stay here and just consume the content. And that's really good to begin with, right? But if you can go to the next level, this requires spending money. Speak to those people that you actually look up to. Get coaching from them, get mentorship. See if they've got any programs. So let's say you're really, really into fitness and there's like this fitness researcher who's got like this science-based fitness course. Buy it literally just buy it because how much you will learn from like their premium products is way more this is your education do you know in the old meta it's just assumed that we want to spend like fucking 10 9 grand a year in the education system and no one even bats an eye as if that's weird but there's like a guy that you've been watching on youtube for years who's selling something for like 200 dollars, and we're scared to buy it these days that's education we've always said haven't we always said we'll invest in our education we love yeah we're, we're students for life this is education and you can pay for education and you w usually get such a better service and you get closer to the person that you've been watching for years so for a while I sold courses. I don't even sell them so you can't even buy them but like for a while I sold courses and the idea was that if someone wanted to spend like hundreds of dollars they would get like all of the knowledge in like a step-by-step -step plan I spent fucking weeks making the workout routines I set it all up and everything so that all you had to do was literally just buy it and this was like you know the, you'd log into the platform this is like literally just all you'd need to dr build your dream body so it's like you didn't need to do what I did which was like you know go and watch a, like thousands of YouTube videos and everything that was like one of my courses I used to sell Nowadays, like I don't sell courses. I put all the courses I have inside of like Adonis Academy. So it's like, that's my community and stuff. And we'll, we'll talk about that soon. Again, I'm not trying to sell it to you, but just 
at this point, just go to the next level if you can afford it and think to yourself, okay, invest in your education, the interest that you have, and you know, you're stuck on a particular thing. So for example, you really care about fitness, you've been watching all these videos, but recently you just feel like you've been plateaued. Now you can go watch the videos online, you know, how to overcome a plateau in fitness. And maybe the guy who's made a video on it, which is kind of nice, Imagine if you just email him and say like, hey bro, can, can I pay you for hopping on a call and I just want to tell you like I'm experiencing this problem. A lot of guys will do it and it'll be quite expensive. Like let's see, some random YouTuber will charge you a hundred dollars just to hop on a call with him and you'll be thinking, oh man, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Bro, it's your education. To learn directly from someone who's in front of you is literally 10 out of 10. This is what, why I really love Alex Mosey. I have his book behind me there. So that I've mentioned this entrepreneur a few times, Alex Famosi, he wrote this book, 100 Million Offers. I fucking love his mindset where he's like, he's literally saying, like I've, I've changed my mindset about this, where he's literally saying like, yeah, like you should be like excited to spend, but like the highest return on investment that you will get for your money. It's not saving your money. It's not investing your money in real estate or, or index funds. Genuinely, it's not. We all think it is. That's all that we've heard from investing. He said that the highest return on your, your money is knowledge because with knowledge, you will make more money. You can spend $500 on the S&P 500 and be happy that you made an extra two and a half bucks after the entire year. If your dick is this fucking small. Oh, but you know, a 5% compounded for 700 years means that I'll be a millionaire. Is that how you want to live your life? Like as soon as you make any money, you save it all like, bro. We know that we're not going to live the same life as the 99%, aren't we? You've, you've already said this to yourself, right? You're not like other people, right? You're not like 99% of people, right? 99% of people are playing the old meta. Make money. Save money. Don't spend it. Don't spend it. Don't spend it. No, don't buy coffee. No, 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 no. Don't buy coffee. Save money. Use the coupons. There's a discount code. Let's get the discount code. Most people, 99% of people are trying to save money so that they can invest it into stocks and shares and real estate so that they can save it. 99% of people are living that way. So why do you think it's a good idea? In this stage, you should ruthlessly, aggressively spend your money to learn from people who are further advanced than you. Buy their coaching, buy their mentorship, buy their courses, buy their communities. Also, learn on YouTube. Also, learn from books which are fairly cheap. But you should literally, at like this young age, when you're just starting your journey, you should be thinking to yourself, if this guy, like, you know, you're watching someone on YouTube, if he's got a product, even if it's a thousand dollars, I'm, I'm, you know, if you can, if you've got like a few thousand in your bank or something, if you can afford that. And of course, if you're like some, some totally broke guy right now and you're in India and you know, the conversion doesn't work out, then of course don't like, oh, Hamza said I've got to buy something for a thousand dollars. But if you see something which is affordable, like you have that much in your bank account, it's better to spend it on something that can make you more money because you're going to learn from someone who's going to help you make more money than it is that it just like sits in your bank and just gets in, you know, it, it, it suffers inflation or you think, oh, but you know, I'll, I'll invest it into the S&P 500 because, you know, if I keep investing every month for, for, for 50 years, I might be a millionaire. It's like, you don't make as much money as you think from investing. I'm telling you right now, no one has ever gotten rich from investing. You can quote me on that and you can quote me on that and this will never ever be changed. No one in the history of mankind has ever gotten rich from investing. This is the truth. No one has ever gotten rich from investing. Everyone has gotten rich first from either a high level career or a business. And then they invested them a huge fuck ton of money into investments. And then they made even more money, but they were rich to begin with. If you think you're going to get rich by investing a hundred dollars a month or something, it's not going to do anything. A hundred dollars that you put into the S and P 500, you're going to get literally about like $7 back at the end of the year. It's nothing. Unless you can put into the S&P 500 $10,000 a month or more per month, 10K per month, then it might be worth it. Then you're making $700, $800 a month profit. Okay, that's, that's, that's reasonable. That's kind of nice. Okay, fine. 10K a month. Until you can put in 10,000 per month, over 100 grand per year into investments. Don't even look at normal investments, in my opinion, right? Look at just save up like a, a good amount of money, you know, in cash, just in cases, if some bullshit happens and then start to aggressively spend money to learn. This is what Alex Amosi has taught me. This is what I'm doing with my money. And every time I do this, my fucking, my income goes up like crazy.
The goal of this section then was for you to understand that consuming content and learning is not a bad thing and that this is actually the first step of this entire process. Pick out your interests and start to really learn a lot about them. You've probably been doing this naturally just for fun already. Like there is that particular topic that you know, you've just been doing it for fun. It, maybe it's self-improvement in general. Maybe it's quitting TikTok. Maybe it's, qu it's probably quitting porn or something. Maybe it's quitting video games. Maybe it's eating cleaner. Maybe it's fitness. There's, there's something that you know, like you, your knowledge of is way more than like the average person who walks in the street that you could talk about it for like an hour straight and tell them, yeah, on, on day seven, you'll get this benefit. But then, you know, after day seven on semen retention, the, the, the graph shows that your testosterone actually goes down for some reason. But then, you know, it can flatline. But then around day 90, there's another thing. And, and you know, if you have sex, like, you know, these things like which a normal person doesn't. Right. So pursue that interest and keep learning. Now, if you still kind of believe that learning and consuming content isn't a good thing. Or maybe if, you, if you're a bit uncertain about what to learn, just rewatch this section of learning just so you grasp this idea. Now, we're gonna now, for this next section, section three to implement, we're gonna use what we've learned in real life and the idea behind this is that we've learned what to do. We've got the new mindsets, you know, like we watched an Andrew Huberman podcast and he said that, oh, um, cold exposure is good for your health. So we've learned that and that's awesome. And now we want to be synthesizers, right? So we want to be able to teach what we've learned. Now, if you just learn something and you teach it straight away, it's not going to be that good because you don't have your own real experience. You could lie and say like, yeah, this is really good guys. And I've done it like, but it'll, it'll really be truthful. The real thing that we want to do is implement and use it in our lives so that we actually get like the real experience and the real thoughts and the real stories that we can tell. So this stage is all about implementation. The goal of this section is for you to grasp the very simple framework to how to actually use what you've learned in real life and why this is so important. So the first time that I really used like self-improvement stuff in real life, I did it really well. In around 2020, you know, I moved back home to my parents' home and I started to read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I read this book in a way that still impresses me today because I know for a fact that literally like less than 0.1% of people will ever read a book in this way. Guess what I did? I would read the book, How to Win Friends, right? And then, you know, it tells you principles of social skills and everything. I would read it. And as I was reading it, the moment I would get an idea of how to use this in person, I would put the book down, I would get changed, I would go on a walk and I would literally go use that principle on a stranger that I was walking past. I'm not even taking the piss. I literally would put the book down and go and use the principle straight away. Sometimes I would put the book down and then hop on like a Discord call straight away so I could use exactly what I just learned. My social skills were not good before this. I literally had no friends before this and straight after doing this, I became way more of like a likable person who could actually speak to people. And you know, like I didn't feel as like awkward anymore and my social skills just leveled up like crazy. I took action immediately. So you need to implement what you've learned, you know, from like we've been learning from these podcasts and these YouTubers and books and everything. You need to start to implement what you're, you're learning. Because the reason why is because it, it increases like the depth of your understanding. You know, it's those micro, imagine it's like, you know, it's the thoughts that you get, the micro thoughts as you're going to use or you are doing the thing that you've just learned. That's the thought that's going to be valuable that you can talk about later on when you're like teaching what you've learned, you know, to be a synthesizer. Now, this sounds like really nice, but the truth is, okay, well, you know, it sounds good, but how do we actually take action? because a lot of us procrastinate. So follow this simple framework. So you first, you consume and you learn like we just did before. So, you know, you're reading the book, you're watching the podcast. Now this is something that is hard to do, but as specifically as you're currently learning, so you're currently watching a YouTube video, right? Like this one, or you're, let's say you're literally reading the book. Keep in mind that the moments that you get an idea of something that you could genuinely try right now, you literally go and do it ASAP right there. Shoot off, literally like throw the book to the side and go and do that thing that you've just learned right away. You won't want to do this. You'll tell yourself like, oh yeah, well, I'll, I'll do it after I finish this chapter or, you know, I'll just finish the video first and then I'll do it. Oh yeah, I don't think I need to do that tactic anyway. 
it's easier to just con continue just watching and you know consume the content than it is to actually go through like with this this framework to learn and the moment you get an idea to shoot off exactly like how I did with how to win friends and influence people you will w make more progress like fast trying something as soon as you get the idea then you will just stalling for no reason we just had a call on the Adonis Academy where one guy he came onto the call and he said in front of everyone that he feels like a little bit complacent in life he's got like nothing to really work hard on his life is kind of like good enough so he's just kind of bored with life and we ended up like asking him you know a bunch of questions to realize okay this this young man he actually had like the idea to make a youtube channel and to make like book summaries so he wanted to like he kind of wanted to be a youtuber he had this idea and so i we asked him okay why haven't you done that always a good question to ask someone and even for you there's a business that you've wanted to start why haven't you started then and everyone always like panics and gets a bit uncomfortable when they're asked this question they're like oh well you know like it, it would cost so much to like get the camera and stuff no it wouldn't use your phone why haven't you really started Oh, well, you know, because it'll, it'll just take really long and yeah, maybe I'll do it after I finish my stuff. No. It's so easy to think to ourselves that we will wait to implement what we've just learned. That we will do it after this moment. And this is why, again, that coaching, that paying for someone's coach. I don't sell coaching. I'm not trying to sell you it or anything, right? My, my, how much I charge for coaching is too fucking high for like literally 99.999% of people, right? I'm not trying to sell you my coaching, but I'm telling you right now that getting coaching, hopping onto like a video call with someone and asking them, you know, telling them like, oh, well, I want to be a YouTuber, but I'm just not doing it. Because a good coach will ask you, okay, well, why, why aren't you? If that's what you want to do, why aren't you? And eventually you'll have to be confronted with the fact that you're being a pussy, that you could start right now that there's no logical reason to other than just laziness. And a good coach, which is what I kind of did, me and another guy that was alongside me and everyone else was watching in this call, you know, where that guy said he wanted to make the, the book summaries. I said to him, okay, well, how about this? We're all going to hold you accountable. Within 24 hours, you're going to post a video. Simple as that. Within 24 hours, you're going to post a video and send it to our community so we know that you've posted one. Imagine that level of accountability when he sees there's 50 people on this call watching him right now. And I saw his like his face kind of think like, oh shit, like, okay, I'm, I'm actually going to have to do this shit. And, you know, he asks a few bullshit questions. Oh, but, you know, what about the camera? Nope, doesn't matter. Shut the fuck up. Record on your phone. Oh, but what about, you know, it'll take, it'll take so long. No, it, no, it won't. Make, just get one uploaded tomorrow. We need to take action fast. And we need to destroy this belief that you may have. That before we can take action to really use something in our lives. That... Are you following along to this video? Is this video still feeling like valuable to you? I want to address something that just popped, like a thought that just popped into my mind because we're getting very deep into these specific stages, but I just wanted to remind you the reason why we're doing this, why, you know, we're spending so long talking about learning and implementing is because we need to actually go and make some progress in our lives so that we can synthesize the knowledge that we've learned from, you know, these YouTubers and these authors and these podcasters. And so when we use it in our lives practically, when we really use the thing that we've learned, then we can teach it, we can synthesize it from our own words. Does this make sense? Does it like, do you understand why I'm, I'm going through with detail and we're on this like implementation step? Because right now we're, we're literally just talking about basic self-improvement. Yeah, go take action. But of course, like, I'm going to bring this back into making money. You need to understand right now that pretty much any thought inside of your brain that pops up when you think about taking action is probably wrong. It's probably your Jeffrey brain, like your lizard brain that, you know, when you think about, oh yeah, like I probably should, you know, go make the YouTube channel. Oh yeah, I probably should work out and use that new thing that I've just learned. So, you know, I probably should go and improve my diet, but I don't really want to or something. It's just the Jeffrey brain, right? So you understand the basics of self-improvement, of delaying gratification, of doing the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. So let's start to implement what we've learned so that we actually have some real world experience, some memories, some stories of making progress in this one specific area that we're interested in. 
The goal of this section was simply just to use what we've learned in real life. And you're probably doing this already, right? So you've been watching, you know, you've been learning from those fitness YouTube videos and you've been implementing what you learned and you're doing the new exercise variation that you learned. So you, you've got the new mindset with exercise. You know, you you already know this, right? This was just basic self-improvement. Okay, literally, like this, some people have to hear this. It's like literally, okay, make progress in life achieve some kind of success in life. A lot of young guys want to make money online and they're like, oh, well, how? I've got no skills and stuff. And it's like, well, do something in life first. You need to actually make, you need to like walk the walk in some areas and to be a synthesizer, to teach what we're learning, you need to actually go and use that thing in person so that you have the experience and the knowledge to eventually synthesize and to teach people. For the next section then, section four, teaching. This is where it gets a lot more money orientated. The goal of this section is for me to convince you that teaching what you've learned, even though you're probably convinced that you're not ready to teach it yet, is actually the way forward. So you have made some progress in some part of your self-improvement, haven't you? You've been watching some of the podcasts, you've been watching some of my videos, you've been reading some of the books and everything. You've made some progress, you've implemented it in real life, but you don't totally feel like totally ready to teach what you've learned just yet because there's there's far other guys right there's other guys who, who have further than you are my youtube journey for years i consumed you know the self-improvements content the books and i just recorded videos teaching what i had learned about my experience the reason I think why my YouTube journey was so quick compared to others and, you know, I, I came onto the scene like randomly, very quickly, was because I didn't have the imposter syndrome that a lot of guys have. I felt like I, sh I deserved to be up there next to the people with like 1 million subscribers. I just conditioned myself to do so and we can do that for you because right here, right now, you probably have like small dick energy. You probably have this kind of, uh, and I'm not saying that to be offensive. It's just the truth and it's not even your fault. It's literally just, this is what like the fucking education system, feminized world, you know, the, the war on masculinities made you, you feel like you probably have small dick energy. You probably feel like you're not even good enough to teach what you know. I'm not, we're not saying that you have to pretend to be like, for example, the professional bodybuilder who knows everything about fitness, but there was one thing that you were interested in that you learned. So let's say it's, it's about the most efficient way to have protein, right? So if you're into fitness, you probably already roughly know that, right? I don't, like it's so interesting. That's a very specific thing, but you probably know that the, the most effective way to have protein is to have it about 30 grams every three to four hours, every single day, right? You learned it. You used it in your life. You've got some experience, some knowledge and everything. You can teach that exact thing without like actually coming across as like a fraud because you're not pretending to be some professional bodybuilder. You're not pretending to be like, for example, some finance guru when you make a video on like, oh yeah, how I saved a hundred dollars a week or something, right? You're just telling your story of how you have done the thing. So a lot of people at this stage, before they start to teach what they've just learned, because this is where the money really comes in, is, is we use the thing in our real lives and then we teach it on social media. That's It's a simple like business model. It's just that we teach it. We'll go more in depth of how to really make a fuck ton of money doing this. But the, the biggest process is that, okay, we're going to teach what we've been doing on social media. The point is... You're gonna to start to now post social media content where you're gonna tell your story in your own words of how you did the thing that you have just been learning and implementing. So you learned about a better sleep tactic and it worked for you, but it, or maybe it didn't work for you. And so you make a video literally saying like, Andrew Huberman's sleep tactic didn't work for me or what, what to do if Andrew Huberman's sleep advice doesn't work for you or what, what temperature should, should the room be when you go to sleep? It's like, you know these things because you watched a sleep podcast. For example, you might know, not know those things, but like you've got an area of interest where you've been naturally just learning in and implementing and improving in your life. Now we're just gonna teach what you've learned. We're gonna teach those lessons. You might think right now, okay, but wait, wait, why would someone want to learn from me compared to wanting to learn from a professional? Why would someone want to learn from you compared to the, the professional bodybuilder or the scientist? Well, think about it. Why are you learning from me instead of some, some 40 year old finance professor? Because you can't understand him because he's a fucking weirdo. Because he's taught, he's using words that you don't understand because you don't look up to him, really. Let's say there, there's a nerd 
right now who wants to quit playing video games and he wants to start going to the gym, right? There's a nerd who wants to build a, a nice body. He wants to get into the gym, right? Who can help? Who can this nerd relate to more? A professional bodybuilder who's 250 pounds on steroids and has been working out for 25 years or a guy who used to be a nerd video gamer who quit playing games and then has been going to the gym now for three months. And he's, he's not big at all, right? He's made like, like literally three pounds of muscle mass. Who can this nerd actually learn from more? Who can he relate to? This guy. You might think, no, no, but the professional will know more. You know, the big bodybuilder. But the thing is, the bodybuilder will talk in a way that will overwhelm this nerd and he won't understand. But this guy will tell him exactly. This guy will say things like, oh, well, you know, it's really awesome. So all you have to do is just go AFK from your, your game and then just do some push-ups and, and you can level up. So, you know, you, what you want to do is level up, level up your bench press to like 60 kg and that's like the first milestone and then the second quest you know like they're using the same language they can relate to each other and so he will actually follow the advice of this guy so much more than the, the professional bodybuilder it's the same reason why you watch me the things i talk about there's there's 60 year old professors who have studied for for 40 years longer than i have why don't you watch them because their videos would be boring as fuck because you wouldn't relate to them you don't, this is, this is like something which no one really knows in this day, apart from the guys making a fuck ton of money. To blow up on social media, especially with synthesizing, with teaching knowledge, right? It's not about being the ultimate professional. It's simply just about being relatable to the kind of person that you want to help. This is why a guy in a bathrobe can make more money than like professors who have studied for so long because I'm more relatable to you. I'm just a guy who's on his self-improvement and I'll teach you how to get to like day seven of NoFap and I'll tell you about that graph that we've all seen that testosterone goes up for seven days on NoFap and then it kind of goes down for some reason. Some random fucking professional, like he doesn't know this shit. He's not on semen retention. I can tell you right now, like, oh, what what to do if you you have wet dreams? Like, oh no, no, no that doesn't actually reset your streak. It's like, we can, we speak the same language and so you you listen and you watch me and essentially you're giving me money when you watch me compared to someone who's some professional past me. Why did my, my aesthetic body guide blow the fuck up when I'm not some professional bodybuilder? I'm not even that big. Because it's not about being at this ultimate level. It's just about being relatable so that people can connect with you. This is the beauty of modern social media. That so many young people don't even see just yet that you can teach these things and actually gain an audience because you're not the professional because you're not him that's the selling point we like we don't give a fuck about the professional we don't remember what we said at the start of this video we don't care if someone's got a qualification anymore because well, like what good is some 40 year old with a with a degree in like fucking um biology what good is he telling you about nofap when he doesn't even understand this shit himself when he doesn't even watch the same kind of porn that we watch what good is that compared to the guy who's your age who tells you like oh yeah, yeah. so uh, like usually on day 14 that's when like you'll get this symptom and you're like oh fuck that's exactly what's happening right now so what about this and he's like yeah i experienced this just yesterday and so this is what i did and it worked for me and you're like whoa he gets me this is the beauty of starting like your own sort of like, you know, your, your brand that we're going to start here is to, to teach what you can teach online. You synthesize that big overwhelming amount of knowledge into something that people can actually understand. Bro, my throat's getting dry, man. <laughs> so in this section, what exactly do you do? You simply... Post content to social media, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, where you teach the things that you implemented in real life. Just as simple as that. And you might say, okay, wait, wait which social media platform should I post on? All of them or uh, which one? Because TikTok's algorithm is really good to go viral. No, no, no. The way to figure out which content, which platform to post to, which website, is simply just which website do you consume on? For you, most likely, it's going to be YouTube, right? Which website do you spend the most time on? YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. YouTube, in my opinion, is the best by far because you make money directly on the platform. It's a long form and everything, but you choose, right? Which one do you consume the most on? 
most likely it's YouTube, it was YouTube for me, which one do you watch the most on? That's the one you should post on the most. And you should just think about, don't think about, oh, should I should I do YouTube shorts? Should I, should I also do TikToks and stuff? No, 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 don't think about it. Literally just think about the one platform and forget every other platform for now. You don't need to, all these like social media gurus will tell you, yeah, get, as, get on as many platforms as possible. No, no, don't stress yourself out. Literally just choose one platform that you consume on, so it's YouTube, and just start posting every now and then. Will you teach the things that you've been using that you've learned in the previous steps? So you make a video where you teach your experience finally getting to set day seven of NoFap and you just say the story and you give a piece of advice. And if anyone else keeps resetting their streak on day three, like I was, this is exactly what I did. This was like the, the thoughts that I had that helped me get past that. Think about how like how valuable that specific synthesized knowledge is where you can literally tell someone, oh, if anyone's having that extreme micro problem, this is, it's one that I just went through and this is what I did to get past it. This is why we need to go and implement and actually have our own experiences first. <clears throat> so the challenge for you then, right here, right now, is the same one that I gave to the guy who was on the call with me, who, you know, he said he wanted to make the book summaries and everything. The challenge for you, upload a video, a piece of content within 24 hours of watching this. One piece of content to that website that you've decided on where you teach what you've recently just learned within 24 hours. Have a look at the time right now. Within 24 hours, this time tomorrow, you must have one. Very quick, no bullshit. Like straight away in your mind, you're gonna be thinking of a bunch of thoughts. This is very important, right? I told you this challenge and straight in your mind, three random excuses popped up. Whatever they are, trust me, don't trust them. These, this bullshit will hold you back for your entire fucking life. Don't trust it. You, I promise you right now, if me and you were like sat together and you told me these three, we'd break them down and realize it was just bullshit to begin with. I guarantee that whatever excuse that you would get to think, wait, I can't post something within 24 hours. I guarantee that it's not actually valid. It's not like a real universal objective truth that you and I and everyone else would say, yeah, fair enough. Actually, that's a good excuse. It's literally just like, it's like your own weak part of your brain that's just testing you and throwing it out like oh no, no but you can't because you're not you're not good enough for that yet and you know you're gonna be kind of busy and you don't have a professional camera see you can destroy those thoughts yourself can't you I don't need to be that good because I, all I'm gonna do is teach what I've already learned and and I'm good enough to teach what I've learned because I've done it myself I'm not actually that busy because it takes like five minutes to record a video, no problem. I don't need a professional camera because I'll literally just use my phone front camera because I'll, it's okay for it to be like my first videos just on my phone front camera. Hamza has a second channel, YouTube channel himself, which has got 300k subs and he literally just uses his front camera. So I don't think it really matters anyway. Whatever thoughts that you're getting in your mind right now before you take this challenge, understand that they are not on your side. That is like the Jeffrey devil part of your brain that has held you back and when you listen to that part of your brain you will stay in mediocrity and complacency don't listen to it within 24 hours from now you will upload the first piece of content make that promise to yourself right now and then keep telling yourself okay within one week from now i will post the next one within one week max and then every week for years just post one video to the to the platform that you've chose for, for youtube for example post upload one video where you teach what you've just learned every single Monday at 5 p.m. Simple as that, literally just, just follow this one thing for two years and you will genuinely will become successful. If you want like one like you know simple thing to follow, upload one YouTube video to, you, to YouTube every Monday at 5 p.m. for two years. By that time, you'll have at least 10,000 subscribers and you can leave your full-time job. You'll be making like at least $1,000 a month online. At least, probably a little bit more. Destroy these fears that you have inside of you. Now, you need this process to be enjoyable. So right now, what we're saying is for you to teach what you've just learned, to, you know, to record a video and you don't need to overthink any of this, right? You're probably thinking, wait, what do I even talk about? Well, how do I structure my videos? What's the intro going to be? What's my channel name going to be? None of the, like these things you'll naturally just find out, but you don't need to be like overthinking. Like, please don't say to yourself like, oh yeah, but I'll do this challenge, but you know, not right now because I don't really know what to call my channel or any bullshit like that, right? So don't have anything stop you. The main thing is literally just upload a video where you just say, like, it, it can be a shit video, by the way, because you're, like, honestly, you're gonna be shit on camera by, right now, it's fine. I was shit on camera till I recorded, like, 100 videos anyway. Everyone is. This is like, imagine, like, uh, y y your son in the future, 
you bring him to like the football pitch you want to see like you know you want to get him into sports and before he stands on the football pitch he says like no daddy i don't want to play because i'm not going to be good i don't want to go to practice because i'm not good what would you say to your son who said i don't want to practice because i'm not good you'd say to him son we practice because we're not good we practice to get good we can't expect to be good without practicing So why not just say this to yourself when you have this fear of like, oh, but like, I can't make these YouTube videos because it's not going to be good. It's practice. You you can only be good with practice. Your first 100 videos should just be seen as practice anyway. And and to not be scared of, oh, but you know, it's going to be a bit embarrassing. Who gives a fuck, bro? You've seen how many people watch my videos and I sometimes I like, like I had a piece of dust go into my nose midway through the fucking video and I just left it in for you, bro. I was so close to sneezing. Like, who gives a fuck? I guess what, you know, there's, there's actually some value. Like, we'll talk about this in the next section. There's value in not being perfect because people can relate to you more. So whatever's holding you back right now, you know, oh, what's, what's my, what's my niche? What should I focus on? What should the channel name be? All of these things are micro, just literally just practice, get your phone out, get the front camera and just teach and it'll feel awkward, but just teach and just say like, so, uh, I I've been trying to, to eat more protein and I always struggled, but then I found a way to, to do it. So I watched this video from this other YouTuber and he said to do this. And so I tried this, but it didn't really work. But then I tried it like this and I had this idea and I did this and it worked. So I don't know if that's like valuable. I don't know if anyone's really watching me, but yeah, if, if that really helps you, then yeah, nice. Or maybe I'll see you for the next video. <laughs> like you can literally upload a video like that and you'll get no views. Of course you will, but that's a bit of practice. And then you can come back the next week and record a video that's slightly better. And if you do that for a hundred weeks, if you do that for a hundred videos, you're gonna literally be like a YouTuber by then or a TikToker or, or you know, famous on, on Twitter or some shit. You simply need to just teach what you have learned and implemented yourself. Now, if you are actually asking, you know, what, what niche or what topic should I actually choose? Niche, you know, if you've heard this topic before, niche, what, what should I niche do? What should I niche? Niche used to be important. It used to be important, but it's not really anymore. In the new modern day, we understand that the niche is actually just you. The best YouTubers these days, they don't just stick into one niche of like, yeah, I make science based, like, you know, fitness YouTube videos or any, they don't just stick on like this one thing. What, what really the best YouTubers are doing, the ones who are growing a lot, the ones who aren't complacent, they are literally just allowing their own passions and interests and then making videos that reflect that. So like my niche, if you want to say it, is kind of like self-improvement, but that's not really a niche because that, that there's like fucking self-improvement is like literally the, the niche, the top, the topic of like 20 different topics of sleep, of fitness, of, of nutrition, of dating, of everything. Right. So it's like, how is my niche and the niche of everything? That's unfair. Right. But it's just because it's my interest to improve all areas of my life. So when you click on a Hamza video, you know it's going to be about improving your life and that's kind of the niche, but that's that's a massive, that's a huge niche because inside of this is, is fitness, it's, it's relationships, it's friendships and family and, and, and philosophy and all this shit, right? So what you realize is that we shouldn't stick to like, yeah, yeah I just make fit, fitness videos about weightlifting. Don't just, don't think that. Don't think to yourself like, oh, I just make videos about this one particular topic. Think to yourself, okay, make videos about what you're interested in naturally you'll find like this really nice mix. So it could be really interesting. Like it could be such a unique mix that you're really interested in basketball and finance. You know, what's beautiful about this. If you literally allow your YouTube video to be like you know, a real authentic, ver- like a real you and you show this and you end up using like basketball terms whilst you talk about finance and you end up using finance terms whilst you talk about ba- basketball, there's going to be guys out there who have the same two interests as you. And they're going to literally fall in love with you because of how similar you are to them, how much they can relate to you. Don't overthink the niche. Too many guys, before they've even posted any videos, talk about all this shit. And the reason why is just because it's easier to think, like, to cope and say, oh, well, I can't, you know, I don't know what the, my niche is or anything. Then it is to just get some videos recorded. Just teach what you like to learn. That's it. That's your niche, okay? Whatever you like to learn, teach it. That's your niche for the rest of your YouTube career. So my niche, I can say, is literally just like, it's Hamza's interests. I make videos on, on money, on relationships, you know, all over. I, I've never just once kept myself to like, yeah, I make videos on, on fitness. 
because it, it would just be boring. It would be quite restrictive. Soon you'd be interested in this other thing and you'd feel like, oh, no, I can't because my audience only cares about fitness. No, 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 fuck that. The new, like, great way to grow your YouTube channel to teach is to teach what you're interested in. Because imagine, remember your, your shit teachers inside of school? They, your teachers and my teachers, they weren't interested in what they had to teach. Remember, they, like, how it would have worked in school curriculums. It's like, you know, some governing body tells the teacher what to teach, right? So oftentimes our teachers came into class, they weren't even enthusiastic about what they were teaching. And you can remember those teachers because they didn't ever actually teach like a good lesson. They weren't passionate. You don't want to learn from a teacher who's like literally teaching something that he doesn't really right now care about. The beauty of something like teaching online and exactly what we're doing is whatever you currently care about, you teach it. This morning, I felt like talking about money, so I'm teaching it. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about how plastics lower our sperm count, which is so different from what we're talking about today. <laughs> so you will post your lesson, your, your video, your content within 24 hours from this, okay? If you really want it to make some progress with this, within 24 hours, no bullshit, no, no limiting beliefs, literally just post one piece of sh like shit content and then start to do that consistently once, two, three times a week, every week, just post something and naturally you'll get better over time. With quantity, with reps is how you get better. Always remember, what would we say to our son who like said like, oh, but I don't wanna go to practice. I don't wanna practice because I'm not good enough. This is why we're practicing. So the goal of this section was to convince you that within 24 hours you should post and you should consistently keep posting and just keep teaching online. If you're convinced of that, awesome, let's move on to the next section. If you're not, just re-watch this entire section that we've just covered on teaching. Just re-watch it normal speed and just let me convince you a little bit further. For the next session then, we're gonna turn, we're gonna talk now, this is really important, this is where most people stop. Most people will just kind of upload a couple of videos where they, you know, they, they try talking about self-improvements, but then they never actually take it the one step further is because they, they stay in the teacher mode instead of the brand. So now it's all about changing what we've just set up here, you know, this YouTube channel, this TikTok page or something. Instead of just like normal YouTube channel, we're gonna change this to a long-term personal brand. This is where the money really starts to come in. Excuse me one second whilst I parch my throat. You don't realize how hard recording these videos are, bro. There's, there's no editing, there's no takes or anything. Like there was a time when my um, my camera battery died. Like I talk so long, my, my battery dies twice. It's about to die again. <laughs> I also have a call in a few minutes. So I think I'll, I'll hop off and then I'll record the rest of the, this video for you as well. I hope you're finding really good value in this one. The reason why I'm recording videos like this is because going through my own journey, I really wish that someone who, you know, had the level of success that I wanted, for example, just fucking recorded a video for hours of just telling me everything that he could so I could just listen to it and really listen instead of, you know, those clickbait videos of like, oh, here's a five video on the top five money making methods. All I want is successful people, intelligent people to make videos like this, which is there's no editing and they literally just dive specific into this one really t like, you know, this one thing so that I could benefit from it every time. Like someone I look up to has just gotten onto like a new podcast and they just speak for two hours. I'm like, oh man, this is so valuable. I'm getting so many good ideas. So I hope this is doing the same thing for you. What we'll do is I'm gonna take a quick break because my throat is parched. I've got a call with my Adonis Academy boys in five minutes. We're just gonna have like a cup of coffee together and then I'll be back, I'll record. So in like the next scene, there's probably like the lighting will probably look a bit different or something. In a bit, bro. Mwah. The goal of this section is to show you that creating a brand instead of just a basic YouTube channel or TikTok audience or anything is so much better for the long term. So there's a difference between a normal YouTube channel and a personal brand and we definitely want to go down this route instead. So how it works is that most people when they start they think about simply just the videos that they'll record and the topic that, that they'll make videos on. So right now you might be hyped and thinking, yeah, you know, I'll make videos on fitness and that's how people will, will find me, is that they will want to see videos on fitness. The new way now that people are becoming ultra successful using this business that we're talking about, you know, this like social media synthesizer, is not by prioritizing like the topic that we're gonna teach, but rather the brand of like literally your personality. 
these days, it, someone doesn't watch my video really because, you know, it's a self-improvement channel. They watch it because of me, like the brand, the business is literally me. Does that make sense? Like Andrew Huberman, sure, like we like the things that he teaches us, but we watch because it's him. Now, when you get like the really good knowledge from someone and also you like their personality, that's the best kind of personal brand. The issue for a lot of people, and this is what like, you know, people who are kind of new to this space, like for example, my dad has a YouTube channel and he does this wrong. They only think about making like just the basic channel with like, you know, the random videos they can think of and they don't show themselves in it. They're, they're like the faceless YouTube channel where like, they're hoping to attract people because of the topic of the video. So this is like, you know, you'll make a video like how to do push-ups and you're hoping that people will watch the video because they want to learn how to do push-ups. But when you think this way long-term, you won't get very successful. What you, Instead, what you need to do is just, like, you know, we'll go through all of what I, I can teach you here. But just keep in mind that what we want to do is present ourselves that people are coming to watch our videos for us. Not entirely, not even mostly for the content, you know, the topic that we're making videos on, but for us. When I started making videos in 2020, it took me a while to develop like my personal brand and my personality. And so for a bunch of months, I was just making random videos on what I thought people wanted to watch. I made a video on like how to cure back pain and I had never experienced back pain in my life. I made random videos, which, you know, I saw them go viral on YouTube. So I remade them thinking, yeah, you know, I'll get some, hopefully I'll get some views. And I take that video and share it to like Facebook pages and Reddit, hoping to get more views, hoping to get more views without realizing that's the wrong way to do it. You don't think about views to begin with. You think simply about developing an attractive personal brand that people actually want to get like emotionally invested into. So a personal brand, I hope you can understand this. What we want is a personal brand instead of just a normal basic YouTube channel. And a personal brand is when you, yourself, your personality, who you are, is the business. People come to watch you because of you. Not like they're kind of interested in the things that you talk about, but mostly they care about you. There's other people that you could watch for like self-improvement and you know, the videos that I make, but most likely you come because it's like a nice merge of like, you maybe like me, you like learning from me, but you also, it's kind of nice that I'm talking about the things that you're interested in, but you can see that my interests move around, right? My personal brand of like, you, you know, the Hamza YouTube channel, that literally follows like who I am. There's no, they, like people think sometimes that like, uh, I'm like playing or anything. There's no character, like literally the bathrobe people think it's like, oh, he's being weird. It's like, I literally just wear a bathrobe because it's just comfy. Like my videos, the way that I talk, it doesn't change. This is literally just like, I try to be as real as possible because I only want like the fans to, to come to this channel. If you're actually going to be a fan of like who I truly am. It's like, you know, like that cringe advice, just be yourself. That's literally 10 out of 10 advice when it comes to like uploading online. People crave this, right? When you think about this from the viewer's perspective, they crave like real authentic people. These days, no one wants to see like a flashy YouTuber who's like, you know, like, like who, who seems a bit fake, who seems like it's like a weird, like, like official company or something. These days, you know, the type of YouTubers who are popping off these days, they're literally just like what you're seeing here. Like, look how many like views and stuff and how many subscribers I get and look how different my, like how, like maybe the, the chances are you probably feel very emotionally invested in my, in my journey and in my channel. Why? There's videos where other, you know, other channels have made where their videos are a lot more professional than mine. They've got a lot better editing that maybe the guy is more experienced than I am. But we get emotionally invested when we see like realness, some authenticity, some grit. When we genuinely see like a video, let's say on YouTube, where it genuinely looks like this is a real person who's just pressed record and he's just speaking to us. These are the kinds of like personal brands, like channels that are blowing up these days. And so it, I just want to like put this into your mind that going about it, like we want to see your real authentic self. So usually at this stage when it's time to, you know, start posting online, so many people, they don't really ever admit this out loud, but you tell me if this is the, the truth. You get a little bit scared of like who you are and you start to think like, oh no, it's going to be cringe if I make this video. And you start to think, okay, I'll act in this way. You, you probably haven't consciously thought this, but you might have like felt yourself doing this. You probably have thought of particular YouTubers, maybe me, maybe someone else, maybe Andrew Tate or something, or like, you know, some other guys that you watch and you've thought of like acting like them. You've thought of like, yeah, yeah I want my video to be like them. Now take an inspiration from them's awesome. And often like I take a lot of inspiration. I'll, I'll copy the video style of people that I like. 
But the idea is that when we actually do make any kind of content, we want to be like as real 100% like who we are. We don't want to change our voice. We don't want to change the way that we move. Like literally I go as far as like, I don't even get changed before I record videos. I don't get changed before I record videos. I don't get ready. It's so it's like, literally it's as if me and you are literally just sat together and I'm just like talking to you. And that seems to like, look at your attention, bro. This is the, probably the, the most focused you've been on a video, a long video like this one for maybe as long as like you, you've ever been watching YouTube videos before. Cause it's authenticity. This is the power of a personal brand. We're all lonely. And so like, you know this, right? So the average person is incredibly lonely these days. They don't have social connection. We don't have tribes. We don't have communities. We don't, a lot of people don't even have friends. And so, the reason why we want to think more of like showing our authentic self is because these days you grow online when people feel like they can connect to you. So I hope that we can make this clear and you understand when I say brand and when I say, okay, make sure you develop more of a brand than just like mindlessly thinking about uploading to YouTube. A brand simply means that you show way more of your personality. It's like, it's you that we're watching. So it's your personality, your real mindsets, your real personality. You know, you make promises, you make mistakes and you tell your stories. You, re you let your real self shine through. You don't pretend to be anyone else but you do of course take inspiration you know because it's like for example i can watch a youtuber who i really like and naturally by watching someone you become more like them you know you're, you're the average of the five people that you spend time with so you can you know take influence of other people you can maybe talk about the, something that i talk about for example and that's totally fine but inside of your video you should try your best to literally speak how you normally speak this is so powerful because these days we really want this like realism when we consume content and another, like an interesting thing that I've learned about recently is this is actually very, very similar to how you would attract like a really good long-term relationship. So I've went down like the deep rabbit hole of red pill and you're know, the way to act like an alpha male and stuff. And those things are amazing to attract a quantity of girls to like, if you just want to sleep with loads of girls, you should act in this one particular way. But if you genuinely want like a secure long-term relationship with like a girl that you want to open up your heart to, it's better to like just be yourself. It really is because you want to get into the kind of relationship where the girl actually truly knows you as you really are. And you want to show that to her like very early on so that you can actually see if you're compatible. It's, it's, this is almost like, this is common sense to most people, but the truth is if you're someone who's like younger me, you'd be listening to this, not even able to grasp what I'm saying. But the idea is you want to be your true, authentic, real self on, you know, YouTube or the social media platform that you're choosing, because then only the people who actually really like you and relate to you will stay around. And this might mean that, you know, less people will, you know, if you acted way more confident, then maybe you would have gotten more subscribers, but that I, or, you know, if you acted like, like you had this mindset or this belief or something, then maybe more people would follow you. But the thing is, it's not that we give a shit about how many people follow us. It's that we want that, you know, the real fans who genuinely like love us, because this is, again, it's just like a relationship. If we can show our real selves, then the people who will become fans of ours will genuinely love who we genuinely are. And that, imagine how powerful that is right now. Imagine how powerful that is. This is where like the big bucks are made when people literally, they can see the real you and they like you, they trust you, they, they found value in, in, you know, like maybe right now you're finding value in this video that I'm making and you're literally thinking like shit, like Hamza's literally recorded for like more than two hours. He's literally got like a dry fucking throat recording this video. Like I, I appreciate that. Like, you know, you're, you're thinking in your mind, like, yeah, this, this guy's not pretending to be anyone else. Yeah. You can almost feel like this level of like social connection. This is where it gets so powerful. Don't just think about uploading to you know YouTube or TikTok, specifically trying to get viral. This is a mistake that so many people make when they first start off. All they think about is just trying to get viral. The issue with just trying to get viral is that you might make some progress. It's still hard, right? It's not an easy thing to get to a million views or anything. The thing is that you'll make some progress, you know, maybe you'll get some views that perform better or something. But naturally by trying to just care about the views, you'll end up making videos and content. You'll end up speaking in a way that isn't even like the real self. And so the, any level of success that you get trying to follow the viral route will actually not even feel like success to you because you'll realize like you're, you're kind of living a life. You're living a lie, sorry. 
So when you start, you know, you're just starting to post right now, you're going to post at least once a week, you're just going to teach the things that you've recently learned, you know, you're going to synthesize things. Don't try to think totally about, yeah, I really hope, you know, like, don't try to have your mindset about getting viral. I try to have your mindset about literally just being as authentically you as you can. And then also implementing some good practices, you know, like make sure you've got like a nice title and stuff, of course, like don't not care about the success of your channel or your business, but make the priority just about the, the purpose of like of being your real self and then just giving like a really good amount of value to the person who's watching your contents. So how do you specifically grow your brand? So now we're thinking about brand. We're not just thinking about a YouTube channel. How do we grow our brand? Just give fuck tons of value. Give like an, an in incredible amount of value in every piece of content that you make. Really think about how you can make this video better, you know, this video, this post, wherever you're making, better for the kind of person that you're trying to help. I've put probably 10 hours into making this video right now. I could have probably just pressed record and, and made a clickbait, top seven ways to make $500 a month online. I could have done that in 20 minutes. I've put 10 hours into this guide because I literally just want it to help you. Because when you do this and you impress and you shock the viewer for how much like, you know, they're helped by you, they're hooked. They will become good fans of yours. They will literally share your videos for you for free, free marketing. Usually you'd have to pay for that. They'll share your videos. They'll eventually go on to buy your products. You'll make money from like AdSense and, and sponsorships. You'll go gain like a bigger audience, which is good for status and even more money. You want to like shock people with how much value you're providing. And for us and in the, like the kind of like area that we're doing this with, it's with knowledge. So other YouTubers, you know, they won't, we won't call them synthesizers, but you know, there's like entertainment YouTubers, there's Mr. Beast, there's like guys who just make like films and nice looking vids, right? We wouldn't call them synthesizers because they're not like, you know, getting the knowledge and teaching it or anything, right? They're just guys who just, you know, their value in their videos comes from the entertainment. For us, our value comes in the education that we can give. And the education doesn't need to feel formal. It doesn't mean that we need to, you know, go and collect a bunch of studies and try to like pretend to be scientists. It just means that we explore what we're teaching the knowledge in a way that our viewer can understand notice that I've not brought up any studies in this in this uh, video notice that in all of my videos I don't bring up studies or anything like that I just speak like it, my best in a way that I think that you can understand and I also spend like a quite a long time like kind of structuring my video and really thinking about good arguments to bring up I, I, I spend extra time to think okay what like limiting belief could the viewer have okay I'll, I'll think about that and then I'll say it to him as well You want to show the most of your personality that you can in this content. So this is what, one thing you can research if you really want to see which what is interesting, how to grow a brand. Girls on YouTube, like you, you may have ever clicked on these videos. I don't know if you've ever watched them, but sometimes they'll pop up. Like, like women in their early 20s, like young sort of girls who make like vlogs of like um, their lifestyle. You, you probably can under, understand what type of girl I'm talking about. They're the kind of ones who like, you know, they'll show, like it's like a really beautifully made video. They'll show them like filling up their water bottle. They'll show them like cutting up a lemon and then they're like, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna go hit this workout and um, and then they always show their personality so well. Those girls have been doing this so well. They'll literally, instead of just showing you like, okay, this is what to do. They will show you their, their personality so well. And like, uh, and I'm just gonna be honest, like yesterday, I, I, I ate a little bit too much chocolate and uh, oh, what was I gonna say? Oh, I always forget what I'm gonna say. Like, you know, they show their personality. And so obviously like, we don't give a fuck about that. We're not what, like, you know what I mean? But the girls who are watching those, those like female YouTubers, they get hooked because that's like a real female friend. Like it feels like you're having a friendship with this person who's being real, who's not acting more professional than they really actually are. Like you can, either you can visualize what I'm talking about or you can maybe just go like, watch one of these like girl vlog YouTubers. I don't know which one you can watch watch but they they're like they've been doing this shit like there's a bunch of girls who've been doing this shit for a while they're just really good at showing their personality that's exactly what we need to re recreate it doesn't mean that we should act in the same way and you know say the same things as them it just means that we should take the strategy which is okay be honest sometimes i'll be recording a video midway through and my mind will you know go elsewhere and i'll literally say to you like, oh bro i just my mind just like wandered off that's like it, this level of realness is deeply attractive these days because again we want to we want to watch and consume the content of people who are actually real. 
<clears throat> one major tip I'll just give you for developing your brand, which is, you know, just an extra side tip, which is really valuable. When you're recording your videos or you're making your content, speak to your best friend, don't speak to an audience. When I record right now, I'm not speaking to a camera. I'm not speaking to an audience. I don't say to this like, oh, so you guys should do this. I'm not speaking to like, you know, the subscribers that I have or anything. I'm speaking to you as if you are my best friend because that means that we have like a better level of connection. It means that I get to explain things in a way that's more fun to me. Like I, it, I'm not imagining myself on stage with a million people below me. I'm literally imagining like me and you literally just sat, sat back just like, and I'm just like teaching you something like, bro, just make a YouTube channel, man. And when you speak like this again, the person watching feels special. The person watching, it, it does something to them where they actually learn and they take action and that is so valuable. And again, you might think, but people don't really care about my personality. You might have, have this thought. People don't really care about my personality. I'm not really extroverted or confident. Good. The truth is there isn't like a winning personality for YouTube. If you think about some top YouTubers, there's a bunch of YouTubers who have literally five, 10 million subscribers and they look awkward as fuck. Like they talk mundane and everything. There's, there's intru like this, there's this one um, software developer kind of guy who like, who like uh, some Asian guy who makes like videos on like coding and stuff. And he, he started to make videos on like money. And I watched some of his videos and he's like kind of a little bit of like an awkward introverted kind of guy. And he's got millions of subscribers. Then there's the fucking, you know, the guys who are like, Hey, Hey guys, what's up, superstar? Today we're gonna to be doing this. Then there's like the, the guy, like Andrew Tate went really viral. It's not about which personality should you be like. It's simply just like literally, if you show your real, real personality, whether you're introverted or extroverted or awkward or, or social or anything, there's so many people who are like you. Because right now you might think that, oh, introversion is bad and so I shouldn't show my personality, right? But you would agree, hopefully, you don't have this ego, hopefully you would agree, there's lots of people who have a kind of a similar personality to you, kind of like the same level of like awkwardness, the same level of confidence, right? There's probably millions. There's probably a hundred million people out there, probably or probably like, honestly, we're not that different from each other. There's probably like 500 million people who are kind of similar to you on the, on the world, honestly. Like, the, you know, our personality, the way that we talk, right? So it's not about, oh, but I'm not extroverted, so no one will listen to me. Because there's hundreds of millions, maybe billions of introverts who are looking for an introverted guy to explain like what we're watching today. It's essentially an introverted teacher that they can learn from. What kind of teacher do we learn best from? The one that we can relate to. Is it any surprise that my teacher in high school was an Asian guy? He was the only Asian teacher, like brown Pakistani teacher that we had. And he was quite like, he was a very like attractive, charming, like he, like all the girls had like a crush on him. So is it any surprise that the guy, the one teacher I had that I actually learned from was from the same country that I was born in and it was somewhat like high status and desirable as well. So, you know, you, you look up to him more. Is there any surprise why he was my, my favorite teacher? We like to learn from the teachers who are similar to us. And this is why it's so important for you to not act like someone that you're not, to act exactly who you are. If, imagine if that teacher in a weird way, that teacher that I learned from, right? Um, his name was Mr. Mr. Ben Ali. Imagine if he literally white faced himself. Imagine if he, if he put on like fucking white makeup and he walked in pretending to be white because he thought that that would make him more successful. I know that this seems crazy racist or whatever, but just imagine if like, imagine if he suddenly was white, I wouldn't have related to him as much and I wouldn't have been like as good of a student. So there's value in being exactly who you are, even though the trait that you have that seems a bit undesirable is holding you back. If you're introverted, that's completely fine because the way that you talk in these videos where you're gonna try and be your real self, the way that you're gonna try and teach people, there's gonna be people exactly like you who need to learn from someone like you because you have synthesized this, you have taken that knowledge from the top, you've learned from these studies, these books and everything, and then you're gonna teach it in a way that you understand and that people like you will understand. Now you're kind of similar to me that in the fact that you can learn the way that I'm teaching. But if I was like, you know, some, some like, clean shirt motherfucker and I wore a suit and I told you formally, okay, you know, if I spoke in a different way, chances are you probably wouldn't have related to me. So imagine if I had the same thought as you, like, oh no, but I'm not like as clean as, and as professional as like some other guys are and so I shouldn't make my videos. Imagine if I thought that. You, if I thought that and I told you like, oh bro, I might start making YouTube videos because I'm not really that like clean or professional. 
you would say, no, 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 but it doesn't matter because like, I kind of like the fact that, you know, like me, like I'm, I'm, you probably like somewhat, maybe I've never thought this consciously, but you probably like the fact that I'm kind of like in some ways like rough and authentic and you're like gritty around the edges. Like I'm not trying to be some sophisticated motherfucker. I wear a fucking bathrobe for my videos, right? You probably like that. But imagine if I said to you like, oh, but I'm not really professional. Well, it's the exact same thing that if you said to me like, oh, but I'm not going to make videos because, you know, I'm, I'm an introvert. I'm not really confident. It's like, Good, that's the point. Because there's people who are like you who will relate to you. We... Ugh. People will become what's called true fans when you show your real personality with your brand. So there is a concept called 1000 True Fans. This is like an article that I'll just teach you about. It's called 1000 True Fans. And the idea, this, this mindset is when we're trying to do really well, on with what we're doing here with synthesizing, with growing on a YouTube channel. We're not actually trying to get to like a million subscribers. I know you think you are, but here's a different mindset. What we actually need is 1000 true fans who really, really, really love us. They're the people who genuinely, they will just do whatever we say because they genuinely just believe us. I've probably got maybe, probably maybe more than a thousand true fans, right? I'd reckon probably 1 million subscribers probably gets you like a thousand true fans, roughly, right? Maybe, but like it depends what, the, I don't even know if, if that's worth the conversion or not. But just the idea is, don't think about the, the mass viral market. Don't think about getting to a million subscribers. Don't think about, you know, this video getting to a million views. Think about your 1000 true fans. Your, your true fan is the person who literally sees the real you and he thinks you're fucking awesome. Your true fan is someone who, if you ended up releasing a product or we're going to talk about how to monetize, he would literally think, oh, fuck, he, he's selling something. Finally, oh, how much is it? Yeah, fuck it. Okay, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it. Your true fan is someone who every video you make, pretty much every video that they're, they're watching, they're always leaving support. We should structure our entire business around our true fans, not around the haters, not around the viral faceless millions who might watch our video if it, you know, if it pops up. We shouldn't think about, oh, you know what, how do I get to a million subscribers? Because they're like faceless. You know, a million people who shallowly, shallowly care about you isn't actually that great. What you want is like 1,000 motherfuckers who love you and they buy anything that you release and they'll support you and it. they'll come and meet you in person. That if you ever had some problems, you could literally post about it online and these people would literally help you. That's what you want to develop. And so the idea is with our brand that we act as authentic as we can, you know, when we're teaching our videos. But we then really only focus on the thousand true fans that we aim to develop. We make all decisions based on the, the th true fan who really loves us. When we decide to make a product, we make the product for this true fan who we can imagine loves us and we make it sick for him. And we think, okay, what would his response be for this, for this product that I'm about to sell? Which we're, again, we're gonna literally talk about monetization in a second. How would he react to this? What would he want? How much money can he spend? What value would he get from this? When you're, when you're making a video, you'd be thinking to yourself, okay, what does my true fan want, to, want me to talk about? When you think like this, you end up making such a wholesome personal brand that will stay around for years longer than the people who only think of the shallow level of like, yeah, I hope my channel goes viral soon. Because when you're chasing virality, you're losing authenticity, you're losing connection. To make this money that we're about to talk about, we're going to make 10k a month literally in the next step. To make that, you don't do it through getting viral. We used, everyone used to think that the way to make money on social media was to get viral. People still think that, right? I'm telling you right now, as someone who's somewhat viral, I'm telling you right now, it's not. I would have to explain for a long time, but like, trust me, getting viral doesn't actually make you a good amount of money as you thought it did. Because for example, you can always almost imagine this. There's a lot of like idiots who have went viral and they're all still broke anyway. I went viral and guess what? I wasn't even profiting anything. I was making a good amount of money, but I wasn't profiting anything because the business side of things wasn't there. It isn't virality that makes you like the fuck ton of money. It's an amazing personal brand. You can genuinely make more money with 50,000 subscribers when you've done it in the right way than people who I promise you have 5 million subscribers. You know, there's a lot of people who have the same subscribers as me who are fucking broke, who literally can't, like they don't even make that much money because their channels have been based on virality. Their channels have been based on those viral videos. And so people who watch those videos, watch them for the viral content because the people who watch them are just brain dead. You know, they just want to consume content, like mindless entertainment. And so the creator of these like viral videos, 
they're usually fucking broke because no one even cares about them. Because for you to make a viral video, it's like, you, you wouldn't make it very personal these days. You'd, you'd make like, you know, a Mr. Beast style thing of like, and of course, Mr. Beast is an outlier. Like he, he became viral and people actually like his personal brand as well. But chasing the virality, in my opinion, is totally wrong. And it's also much harder. The thing that makes more money, the thing that is actually nicer for your life, and also literally just like actually gets you like true fans who like you and who will continuously buy from you. And also the thing that will give you more success long term, not just for you know how long you're viral for this year till someone else overtakes you, but literally people like your fans will follow you for years, is the personal brand. Don't just think about viral content, this faceless content of like, you know, doing these like clickbait challenges. Like I tried this for seven days and all this bullshit. Make the extremely valuable ec educational content for your true self, like I'm doing for you. This video isn't gonna get totally, totally viral, but this video might probably get 1 million views over the next year because, not because it's like a virality type of video, but because it's actually valuable. That's how you get like a long-term strong business. Because imagine with, imagine with this video, how real I've been, how much value I've given you, how much education I've given you, how many of your little like uh, limiting beliefs that have popped into your mind and I've literally, I've known when it's gonna pop into your mind and I've destroyed it straight away. Imagine the value of this video and now imagine if this video performs well. Can you imagine the power of that compared to like a faceless fucking, imagine if I did one of those like, oh, I, I'll try a Navy SEAL challenge or I'll eat 10,000 calories. It's like people are watching those type of, like that content because they're just, they just want some like fucking dopamine. They're not watching for you. But with this, it's like this kind of video, when it performs well, you gain a lot of true fans and they are the people. It's only true fans who will buy your products. The real money in social media, I promise you, please try to believe me, it's not made through the virality. It's not made through the followers, the subscribers, the sponsors. It's not. The real money is made through get, getting more true fans, making your true fans love you, and then making a really good exceptional product to sell to them. I Literally, you could save years of this journey. I hope you can just believe me. The real money is not made when you chase virality. It's made when you develop your true fans and then you just make an awesome product to sell to them. You make the product. As someone who already had above a million subscribers chasing virality, I'm telling you, it's not as profitable as you think. As soon as I made a good product and I started to just focus on my true fans, I tripled how much money I make. Please, like, save yourself the fucking year that I had to learn this lesson myself. Focus on your true fans. Focus on literally thinking, okay, who is the kind of viewer who genuinely loves you? Not your YouTube persona, not how you're pretending to be, but, like, you as a person. Probably other people around the world who are kind of similar to you, who've got similar goals, who've got a similar personality. And as soon as you start to show yourself online, they'll find you and they'll think like, wow, this guy's so similar to me. And wow, he's saying something that's really valuable. And those are the people that will make you a fuck ton of money because they will literally be excited to give you money. The worst thing that can happen, which is what happened to me, you focus on virality. You focus on just subscribers, right? I was only focused on subscribers. I literally had my fucking subscriber goal, 500K, 100 million, 1 million, like written on my wall, right? I was only focused on subscribers. But when you only focus on virality, on subscribers, likes, guess what happens? You start to attract people who don't even give a fuck about you. And so when I started then wanting to make more money from this, wanting to turn this into a business, the amount of criticism I received, and I, and I was thinking like, wait, I thought like they would love me and stuff. And I realized it's because I've attracted people who was attracted to like the clickbait content. They didn't like me. You don't want an audience of people who don't really like you, of people who don't want to buy your products and of people you don't really like. I hope you can learn from this lesson because you will genuinely get to your business goals a year faster than I did. Don't try to make viral content. Simply just make the content for your, your true fan exactly what he would want. And this usually means you're gonna get less views. You're gonna get less subscribers. And so that seems scary. You've probably got a goal right now. Yeah, I wanna get to 100,000 subscribers in this, in this, in this. But remember, subscribers and followers, that isn't actually money. That isn't actually like real business success. There's a lot of people with 500K, 100K, 1 million who are broke, who literally still don't even make good money. There's a lot of people like that. You don't want it. Like there's a lot of channels that have got 1 million subs and they get like 10K views. Subscribers are not cash. 
each subscriber is not like a dollar or anything. Trust me, it's like you need to build the business around this anyway, which we're about to do, but just make sure you're growing with the audience who genuinely actually like your authentic real self. That any thoughts that you get, you'd be able to express it and you will express it. Does this make sense? So that anytime you're about to record a video now and you're gonna teach something, right? You, you understand the synthesizing process. We learned something, we implemented it in our real lives, we took action, we made some progress, we got like a nice story, some thoughts that we can think about. Then we teach it online, we grab our phone and say like, oh, hey, you know, like I just got to day seven and I just experienced this. Oh, hey, like, you know, my protein, I, I, I actually just did this and it actually worked. And that gets us to the point where we start to build this brand where people come to watch us because we are real. Because when there's a thought in our brain as we're recording or maybe before we're recording that might feel a little bit awkward, we say it anyway. And so the person watching genuinely thinks like, fuck, this is a real person. They invest into it and now they like you so much and they've benefited from your videos because you've been teaching them that now they're ready to buy from you. People, when they like you, if you end up saying like, oh yeah, I've got a product that would help you. I think the product's fucking sick. I've been working so hard on it and it's gonna give you so much value. If you like my normal videos, you're probably gonna really like this product. You know, if you've got some money to spend, then you could do. These are the people who are gonna make you fucking rich. More than 10K a month. Don't go down the route that I did for a long time, chasing virality subscribers. It, it, it was only when I had one and a half million subscribers that I realized like, fuck bro, subscribers does don't make you rich. The business does in the end place. In the end, you still make a product to sell. And now the issue is I've got a million and a half subscribers where a lot of them only really care about this particular like viral clickbait video that I'm making. And, and they like this personality, which I've, sh I've shown like a fake version of myself to be this wholesome guy who doesn't care about money. Now that I want to make more money and I want to be more successful and I want to level up my business, people are hating me. Like, you know, the, no one's like hating me, but you know, people are kind of like criticizing it and they're, they're surprised by it because I didn't show my authentic self. I, I dug a hole to pretend I was someone else. Now it's like I'm authentic as fuck and it like, it feels freeing and I make so much more money. Your rate of growth in your channel will slow down if you do this, but I promise this is worth it. The goal of this section for you was for you to understand that a personal brand is all about authenticity. It's literally just selling with your personality and you're not going to chase like viral trends. And instead, you're just going to think about your 1000 true fans and you're just going to focus on helping them and developing the 1000 true fans, right? You can make a lot of money with a small audience. It's for you to understand that we got onto this journey, not for the subscriber, but what for, like, you know, not for the million subs, but what we thought the million subs would get us, which was a fuck ton of money, right? But that's not certain. There's, since there's people with a million subs who don't make much money, we, we understand now that actually having the subs or the followers or the viral platform doesn't actually just like certainly give you money. So we're just gonna, you know, we're gonna be authentic. Our real goal is, yeah, we wanna make our fuck ton of money. So let's do that directly. Now we're going to talk about how to monetize your brand. And this is the most important part. Now this I've put right at the end. I know for a fact some Jeffries have, just, have already just skipped here. If right now you've just skipped to this section, I promise it's not even going to help you. You may as well just close off this video. This section's not going to help you. It will only help you if you actually watch the previous, all the previous points. And I know this video is really long. I'm not saying that you have to watch it all. But if you've just skipped here, I promise you that this isn't going to help you. So you may as well save your time and click away. If you want this video to help you, just go about it from the start in order, pause it. Okay, have some breaks, watch something else, but watch this video in order. Don't just skip here, otherwise none of this will really make sense. The goal from this section then, following on from what we've just learned, is to how to make money from all of this. So far, what we've done is we've followed the meta synthesizing process. Remember we said there's a meta? We followed the synthesizer process, which is step one, we learned. We consumed a bunch of content, we learned some stuff. Step two, we implemented that stuff and we went out there into the real world and we really tried to use that thing that we just learned into our own lives. And you know, some elements of like self-improvement has happened here. We got our own experiences, we got our own stories. Stories. Step three, we started to teach these things online on our favorite social media platform. So we started to teach like, oh yeah, like here is my experience of implementing this thing that I've just learned. And you speak in a very like authentic way or you, you, uh, you teach, sorry, you teach in a very authentic way. And step four is realizing, okay, we really want to do this in a way that's, that's long term for our personal brand rather than just virality. We start to think more about turning this into a long term successful business rather than just trying to make us as fast money as possible today and trying to get as many subscribers as possible. We don't want as many subscribers as possible. We want as much money as possible. 
We always thought subscribers equals money, but it doesn't exactly, right? We need to remember this. We want to make a fuck ton of money. And the way to do that is through personal branding, through showing your real personality and through focusing not on the huge audience, but on the small, small, tiny little audience that actually really like you. When you focus on the small audience, like the particular person who is a true fan of yours, who genuinely would do anything. Like, you know, for example, I know someone's a true fan of mine when like they've got like an eyebrow slit like I do because I've showed this on one of my videos of how I did it. And now it's like when I speak to someone and they're like, oh bro, your videos changed my life. And I see that eyebrow slit. I'm like, bro, I know for a fact this guy is literally like a true fan of mine. I know for a fact he genuinely, his life has been changed from my videos because he's literally put a slit in his fucking like eyebrow there just to like look like like you know to like have the same kind of look as me when you have that effect on this small it's not going to be most of your audience a small amount of audience are going to be that dedicated they're the ones that you focus on with your personal brand now we're going to monetize this personal brand and we're going to make a fuck ton of money like i told you I started off with only doing one-to-one -one coaching, self-improvement coaching. So I'd hop on calls and it was very mentally demanding. Like I'd, I'd do four hours of like video calls per day, speaking to people, your throat feels proper dry and you're listening to people's problems, which eventually like really like weigh on you negatively. So I stopped that entirely. Then I, I made an online course and this is what most people would really recommend these days. And it's somewhat what I would recommend. You make an online course where you, essentially it's almost like a playlist of videos that you make and you package up and you sell it really nicely and you price it really high, like $200, $500 and it's just passive and it just sells. That was like level two and that's pretty good. That got me really far. But I've realized now what literally the single best thing and I'm not, I'm honestly not gonna lie to you. When I was scripting this video, I stopped here and I was like, wait, do I actually wanna tell like the viewer this because this is going to create competition for me because this literally genuinely is the single greatest thing that you can sell and if a lot more people start selling it like i'll probably make less money but i want to give you like the fuck ton of value that i wish someone gave me years ago the single best thing that you can sell level three the single like literally the meta of the thing that you can sell right now is a paid private community a paid private community People used to do this previously with just like Discord servers. So you saw Andrew Tate's Hustlers University was literally just a Discord server, $50 a month. And he was making millions from it. We're not going to do it on Discord because that's got like a bad rap. It's, it's like this thing of like, you know, people will pay for your thing. They'll join. It's just a fucking Discord server. It's just cringe. It's like Discord server should be for free. So we're not going to do it on, on Discord. We're going to do it on this other website, which looks a lot more professional. And I'm going to teach you literally exactly what you should like market, what you should give in this, this community to make it worthwhile, how much you should charge, everything like that. So remember, this only will work if you have like an actual brand because there's a bunch of channels out there right now. They've got a million subs, but they focus on that virality. If they made a paid community, almost no one would join. When I made my paid community, I thought, you know, 10, 20 people would join and I was charging $100 a month, right? 100 guys signed up immediately within a few hours. I didn't even announce it fully. I made an unlisted video that I sent an email to. That's it. And a hundred guys signed up within 24 hours, which is a consistent 10,000 a month. And I literally only mentioned it once on an email. I didn't even like make like a real good sales funnel or anything. And then I tripled the price. It's now 400 or four times. It's $400 a month and literally three, four, five guys are buying it per day. This is the thing that's making me more than a hundred K a month. It's amazing. Alex Amosi, the author of this book, he has this advice that, that I really like, which I only now understood, which is to get to six figures, $100,000 a year, so roughly 10K a year, all you need is one product, one platform, one avatar. He says this so casually, one product, one, pro one platform, one avatar. One product, one platform, one, one avatar. What he means by this is that we should only have one product that we focus on, one product that we sell. We should only do it on one platform. So forget about, you know, trying to get onto TikTok and YouTube and, and, and all these platforms. Just focus on just one and then just do it for one avatar, like one kind of person that you're trying to help. This is the stage that we're on right now. One product. We should have one main product that we try to sell that is so good that we feel incredibly confident selling it. For a long time, I sold courses and I didn't think they were like that amazing. 
because online courses have like this bad rap, like people think they're kind of scammy and stuff and they, they, they are seen as like overpriced. The knowledge in them is, is worth the money, but it's just, you know, it's like, a, like it was a thing that I was never totally confident with. So I was constantly making new courses, making new programs and stuff. And, I, and so I didn't follow this advice for a long time and it only hit me a few days ago. I was like, oh, this is what he means. I should have made this community from the start and I would have made a fuck ton of money by now. So what we're gonna do the, the products, the one product that we're going to make is a private community. Private community sounds vague, so this is exactly what you do. You host a community on a platform where people can come in and talk to each other. So people used to do this on private Facebook pages. Then people started to do this on Discord. But the thing is, these two have started to, to seem really bad. Like anyone who pays for like a private Discord these days feels like they've been scammed out of their money because it's, it's a fucking Discord server. So these days it's moved from this and it's now on more like premium websites. You sign up to one of these websites where you can make a community. There's a few that you can use. There's ClickFunnels, there's Kajabi, and there's also what the one that I use called School. You have to pay for all these. It's it's kind of expensive. It'll be like a hundred dollars a month for, like for you to pay, so you can host the community. But there are a lot better platforms than just like a Discord. You can use the free Discord server. You can still do that if you don't want to pay the hundred dollars a month to like use these ones. If you do want to use School, I'll link. Like they gave me an affiliate link. I'll use that. I'm not saying it. But like my my platform's literally on there. Like you can go have a look at my platform. Like my my community's literally on there. So I'm not saying this just because I want some money. But they gave me the affiliate link, and I'm. I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna post the affiliate link. If you wanna use the same platform that I do, which I highly recommend, I've not used Kajabi or ClickFunnels for the community thing, I've used them for selling products and stuff, but for the community platform, I personally use School because I like the owner of it. The owner is a guy that I've mentioned a bunch of times on YouTube called Sam Ovens, and he's like a like this entrepreneur that's very successful and he sold all of his businesses to go all in on School. And so when I saw that, having watched his, his YouTube videos, Sam Ovens, I thought, bro, if he's going all in on school, so am I. Like his YouTube videos have really helped me. Then I ended up getting on a call with him and he's literally asking me for advice on like how we can make this better for me. So I'm thinking, fuck, bro, this guy, like like he's gonna make this into a sick platform. So I, I, it's the first time I'm ever thinking about like a company where I'm thinking like, yeah, like I actually wanna help them succeed. So I've got like my school affiliate link where essentially all you do, you sign up to this website or any of these community websites, you make the, the community like this, you put it behind a paywall, so you you, you know you make like a sales page on, on ClickFunnels or something, or, or even on Stripe, and you literally just send your audience that you're building up to this private, like you know, the sales page, and then you see their email, okay, they've, they've um, bought the, the package, and then you just like allow them into this community. And so inside of the community, what you'll actually offer, like the product that you're selling is, this private space that you everyone has to pay for, which means that there's going to be a very small amount of people in here. And you do kind of like a community coaching with them. You do quite frequent video calls where you just hop on, you just send everyone a Zoom link and you just hop on and you literally just have like a nice chat with everyone. Like I literally just came off what, you know, I told you like I was going to have like a, a coffee call with guys. I, li I was just on for one hour, literally just having coffee with like 20 guys. We're just talking about like dreams and then psychedelics and stuff. Like bro, I would have done that for free. And everyone in there has is paying paying me hundreds of dollars a month and I had fun. It literally was like, I had a smile on my face through the call. Imagine that, imagine literally having a group of people to like drink coffee with on a video call and just like talk about stuff, right? You'd probably do that for free, right? You'd probably do it for fun. People, be, because they are your true fans, they will pay you to organize this because not only do they want to get like extra close to you, but they also know that you will gather like a community of people who are like each other. Suddenly, like people in my community have made friends. We've went on fucking, like we've literally climbed mountains together. Imagine how life changing that is. So this is what you do inside of this community. You just do a bunch of like video calls. You message people. You just get close to them as if it's like your own social media. And then you organize some like in-person events. You literally say like, oh boys, th there's this mountain. Like, is anyone else in my country? There's a mountain we could hike up. Like, let's organize it. And then there'll be like four people who be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll, I'll travel down for it. So 17 guys came to, to hike with me. I was going to do that for free. Think about that and you're getting paid a ridiculous amount. So inside of this community, I know it sounds a, still a little bit vague, but the idea is you make this community 
you get some people in who are your true fans and you literally just keep asking them, okay, what more value can I give you? Like, let's hop on some calls, let's message them, show them some videos that you're watching, literally just be close to them. And this is like, this becomes like your hub. Like this is where you spend a few hours a day of your time, just because it's like, it's one, it's people who you actually like because they're similar to you, they're, they're your true fans. And two, because you're getting paid a fuck ton of money and I won't tell you exactly what to do. So, you know, I do a call every Monday, Wednesday, or Friday or something. What I would say for you is literally just set it up, set up the community, set up the payment and stuff, send people over there. And then as people join, start to ask them, okay, like, you know, what, what, what feedback should we have? What extra things should we do? Do you want to have calls every day for an hour? Do you want to have two calls a week? Do you want to have one call a week? You ask the early people who join and they're essentially just giving you like feedback to make it sick. So as soon as like the first like 50 guys, 100 guys came, I started to have calls with them. I started to ask them questions and ask them, okay, should we do this for this, this uh, group that we have? Should we do this? Should we do this? And they're just telling me exactly what they want. How much should you price this private community at? I really think that you should make it a monthly subscription because the reason why just for me is because with something like this, I actually really psychologically liked the idea of everyone paying monthly so that I kind of ha like had this feeling of like, okay, like they're pay they've paid for this month, but they'll only continue their subscription if it's really, really good. So I kept it at a, as a monthly subscription fee and I made mine $99 a month which is a lot, that's twice the price of Hustlers University. Mine is now four times as much. My, mine is like a very private exclusive community now and it's got such a demand that I charge $400 a month and every single day there's another three, four guys. Like I'm gonna have to increase the price soon again because you don't, with something like this, because you know, it's something to do with your time, you have to go on calls and everything. You don't want there to be too many people. So we've already got 200 people who have joined mine. It's making a good amount of money and very soon I'm going to increase the price again to like 500 and, and then again and again and again and I'm going to cap my members out at like 500 max members we've got like 210 right now so for you maybe start with $99 a month which means that for you to make $1,000 a month just 1k you know you want to quit your job or something you just want to have like you know the bare minimum income you need 10 people to sign up it's not a lot you literally could get that within like a few months of starting your YouTube channel. If you've got like a thousand subscribers right now, you honestly like you could actually get 10 people to sign up at 99 a month. Then when people sign up, give them a fuck ton of value. Literally go onto calls with each person and ask them, okay, how could we make this group sick? Would you help me? Like give, get ideas from them. Really just make it good for them. And from there, it's like, we, you know, this is now in the future. We can talk about other things you can sell and how to upscale this. But I think the majority of people would be very happy. Just make it $99 a month, have the link to buy, just put it in your description of your videos where you're teaching. And just at the end of every single video say, by the way, we've got a private exclusive community. Just click on that link and you can join it. I promise you it's really, really good. Say that in every video and I guarantee by the time you've got like a thousand subscribers or 2000 subscribers, which will take, you know, a couple of months, you'll have more than 10, 20, 30 guys sign up. And eventually if you make the community so worth it, the money that they're paying, they'll just keep it going. So imagine now if you suddenly had a hundred guys who, who are in there who love it, that's 10K a month that they're, they're paying you, which is outside of YouTube. So YouTube AdSense is still gonna give you money. And then you just, all you have to do is just think about make your community exceptional, keep posting videos where you mention your community. That's it. I would, you'd probably want to cap the, the maximum members. So my cap is going to be 500. No one can come in. Once it's got 500, no one can come in up until someone else like cancels their subscription, then we'll let other people in. And so selling this is very easy because people want to get closer to you. People want a private community. Like people love to spend money on communities these days. And so, especially if you mention the scarcity, like I'm, I'm not even trying to sell you my, my community, but there might be a chance that you're even interested in it because of like, just how high, how much I've, I get to hype it up for free. Like it's almost like I'm selling it to you, but I'm actually not. All I've told you is like, yeah, I go on video calls. I've, I've done a, I literally just had coffee with my boys this morning. We're gonna, we went on a hike last weekend. We're about to go on another hike. I'm not even trying to sell it to you, but it probably sounds fucking sick already. You're probably thinking like, wait, that actually sounds kind of fun. Like a, that would be kind of nice. Maybe you can't afford it or something fine, but you might be thinking like, yeah, that's actually kind of sick. What's Hamza is like, you know, the link is, is in the description. You might even want to join just because it's like, it. I genuinely see the enthusiasm I have. I genuinely think 
my community is sick so i feel like awesome like authentic to sell it now this is what we want with you we want you to make your community set it all up and to feel like it's so amazing you know you constantly just speak to the guys and it's literally like your hub that you spend time on so that literally these guys are just giving you advice on how to make it better and so when you mention it on your youtube videos when you you know when someone comments saying like oh well, it's too expensive you literally think to yourself like no it's not it's not expensive. Like if someone ever comments for mine to say, wait, four hundred dollars, I'll literally be saying like, you don't realize, like literally, like this is worth three times that much. I'm promising you right now, my group is worth a lot more than what I'm charging it for. When you have this level of like, shit, this is actually a really good product. You can't help but to accidentally sell loads of it because it really is fucking valuable. This is the path of the synthesizer. This is the new meta of making money. I know it seems kind of vague right now, but as you take steps towards this, you'll start to realize, fuck, Hamza was right. We start by just learning online, then we implement it, then we start to teach it, right? That's just the basic pro process of like self-improvement and then make some YouTube videos. We change it more into a brand where we really show our personality and to monetize our YouTube channel, we, you, we make a private community where we just think of it as like the hub that we spend a few days on, you know, on, on our computers. We just like, Log in there, see what people are discussing. People are asking questions. You reply to them. Some guys like asking for like, you know, he's talking about something private. So you're like, you message him because you want to help these guys. You send him a link. You're like, oh, bro, let's let's um, this would help you. you there's another guy. He's going through some shit right now. Some he's just going through a breakup and he's really sad. You literally message him like, bro, here, uh, join this call right now. Let's let's hop on a call. You care about these guys, and suddenly it's like all you've got to think right now. You know, this vague feeling that you've had of how do I make money? It's like it's just simple. Just grow the YouTube channel send people to your community. It's that simple. I can't believe it's taken me years to get here for this realization that it's literally just have this one product that you sell, this one community and just make it sick. And then just keep learning, you know, following the synthesizer process. Keep learning, keep following your interests, keep implementing, getting better in real life, keep teaching what you're learning and then just send people to the community again and again and again. It's that simple. There's a few more steps you have to do. You have to figure out your method of selling. How do you want to sell? Like, how do you want to mention this community? Do you just want to say it in every video and link the sales page? Do you want to do these email funnels and everything? These are like extra steps, but to, to make it really simple, all you need to do is just set up your community on the, the platform that it'll be hosted on. School.com, clickfunnels.com, kajabi.com. My school affiliate link is there. Just If you use that one, I get money. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to tell you to use it, right? You just set it up there. And then all you just do is set up like the payment processing thing. So, okay, so people can buy it, which you can figure out usually with like, with these platforms, it's already set for you as well. And then you just send people to the checkout link. You just send people to like a sales page. You just send people, you can literally just use like a Stripe little um, product page. Setting that up is like a micro thing. So I know right now you're probably thinking, oh, well, you know, yeah, I don't know how to do that. That's literally like a two minute, like it's like a technical shit that I'm not going to show you. It's just like some some um, tech YouTuber can show you, oh, here's how to create a product on Stripe. It's, it'll take five minutes. Once you've done those technical details and you've set it up and you have your link where people can purchase and you put that link in every YouTube video that you make, that is how you make a fuck ton of money. Now, as your YouTube channel grows, more and more and more people will join your community. You'll, it's very likely that you'll get to a point where too many people have joined your community and you'll need to up the price. I've had to up my price four times and I'm gonna keep up increasing it. As soon as we get to 250 guys, like we've got 210, as soon as we get to 250 guys, I'm gonna increase it by another $100 a month. As soon as we get to 300 members, so we're on 210 right now, but when we get to 300 members, I'm gonna increase it again by another $100 and I'm gonna cut, cut it off at 500. Because so many people are joining and literally these guys who are paying hundreds of dollars are telling me like this is the best thing that they've spent money on. And this is literally not me. I'm genuinely still not trying to sell it to you. If you're interested, you can join if you want, but like I'm not even trying to sell it. This is just the way that you will talk about your community when you genuinely think like it's it's sick. When you think that your community is exceptional, just because you've, you're just active in there, you speak to everyone. And so naturally you end up speaking about how to make it better and better till it hits you like, wait, this is sick, like this, like what they're getting, like I was literally brushing my teeth thinking like, bro, what the value these guys are getting is amazing. This is how you make 10K a month. You just get a hundred guys to sign up, which will take you a good few months to get to. But the plan there is just simple. My community is linked in the description. The school affiliate link is also linked. I've spent hours making this video. My throat is parched. And so if you can return the favor in like 20 seconds and just share the link of this video to a friend, you'll help them. They'll think that you're cool for sending them a, a helpful video and you'll also help me.
do the hard work, especially when, wait, I've got to say the call to action. Click the link uh, in the description right now and also click on the share button and send that link to someone right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.